Thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning in to the Blackport Show. I'm Brother Subject, and this is the first episode of many more to come. Today, going to have a conversation with author Aize Jama Everett. He's the author of The Liminal People, The Liminal War, Entropy of Bones, and he has a new book that's going to come out. And, you know, as we go through this interview or this conversation, I'll let him get it out. We had big conversations about many things like comics, altercations, travels abroad, many other things. Many things we have in common and things that surprised me about him. Also, during this conversation, I had a brain fart about the book that me and my son Malak read. and We had our own little book club. And I want to just put it out there that the name of the book was A Long Walk to Water by Linda Sue Park, and it's based on a true story of a man named Salva Dutt, or Salva Dutt. But nonetheless, the book was called A Long Walk to Water, and it's by Linda Sue Park. Very short book, but very powerful book. Pick it up, read it. Thank you. So check this show out, and I hope you have a great time listening to this. So let's get to the show. We have my man Aize in the house on the black porch. Well, I guess we're <laughs> on the porch, but yeah, but mean, we here. We in we in the place to be, right? We in the metaphysical porch. Tell the folks who you are. You know, tell them what your name is. Aize Jama Everett, uh, born in 1974, Harlem, New York. Author of the Liminal People of the Liminal War. The Entropy of Bones, the soon-to-be-released Box of Bones, et al., ad infinitum, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, shit, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. Man, those books is awesome. Thanks, man. Those... I appreciate that. Hey, um, You know, I mean, even before we get into it, like, where where can folks get that at, though? Uh, You know, the number one thing, you always know, go to your local bookstore, you know, be like, hey, could you order this if you can do that? Uh, the library is a beautiful place to be. But, you know, if, if you're if you're like most folks, Amazon's got it, you know, Barnes and Noble's got it. You know, you just got to, you know, online. It's all there. It's all there. Cool. Cool. Glad you're here, man. I'll tell you on mic, like I said off mic, man, all you got to do is invite me and I'm here. Yeah, there you, you know, go. That's all you got to do. There you go. All right. Well, you shoot. Hey, y'all hear it. The, the <laughs> brother's going to be here like every week. Hey, <laughs> it's, it's a nice spot, you know. It's got to, You got the records. The records, yeah. You, you got know, the tiger on the wall. The records the are on the porch. You know, you hear the tiger in the back. You know, you got the guitars. I mean, it feels like family. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I'll never forget, you know, like, um, you guys really, like, you know, when I was traveling and I went to Ethiopia, man, like, I don't know if you remember, but, like, I was I was super open at that time because, like, my whole life was, like, you know, I really, you know, they say let go and let God or whatever. Yeah. I was like, oh, oh okay, God, I let go. It's scary as fuck, you know, <laughs> and, um... I don't know, man. It felt like two minutes I knew you. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this cat is down. I know this dude. I like this dude. I I, I don't remember meeting this dude before, but I've met this dude before. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? So, like, for that, you always got love from me, man. Being in Ethiopia, it was cool, man. But at the same time, I was like, man, you know, like, I'm here, but, like, I'm really not connecting with anybody. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, I like people, and they like me, but... They don't know me like that. Yeah. They don't feel me on a certain level. So, like, you know, I was, like, going to the spots, getting on the mic, rapping and stuff. People like, oh, cool, you do that. Yeah. But it was like, they don't know what I'm saying. They didn't know, like, what I was, like, they, they didn't know nothing about. Like, everything I represent is the Black Porch. Right. Then I met another brother there. And he was cool, but it was more like he had been there for a while. So, like, he was, like, a little bit just, like... People even feeling me? Do they know me like that? Mm -hmm. Am I just the American guy mm -hmm. that's like blowing up on the scene? Mm -hmm. So like he let it all out on me. You know, that's he told me about like his problems with his like some lady that like hemmed him up, and like he doesn't know if the kid is his or not. Uh, and this is day one. I'm uh, like, so I didn't like I, I wasn't like not trying to mess with him, but 
And I wasn't yeah. trying to not dis. I wasn't trying to distance myself from, but I was like, yeah, it might be better too. I was, I was like, I'll catch you. Yeah. And he's like, so then he hit me up another time. He's like, man, I wasn't trying to like lay it down on you or nothing. I was like, man, I feel you, dude. You just going through a lot. You going through a lot, and like you felt like I was the dude that you could like lay it down on. You know, it's like, so I was like, that's cool, but like, but I was like, let's just be folks. Yeah. And then, you know, so it didn't really jump off. I was on, like, one of his radio shows. I was, you know, I see him all that time, you know, every now and then. But then when you came through, <laughs> I was like, oh, snap. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. This dude, like, he already he's already speaking my language. That's the only way I had to talk, man. You know, he's speaking my language. He's saying stuff that I know. Uh, man, we should just go and just get drunk. <laughs> Let's go do that. We... You know, I tell that story. I don't know if we can tell this here. I mean, I think we should. We should. Just speak yeah. on it. When that dude... So this is who I'm across the mic from. So we went to this little art show, whatever. You know what I'm talking about. We went to this little art show. And this is when I knew I was like, oh, no, I, I can hang with this dude. We went to this little art show, right? And this crazy like crazy and this is really the only time this has ever happened to me i know y'all said it happened to you before it had never happened to me before or since then crazy ethiopian dude drunk off his anus mm. like no common sense about him left on the world not my casual experience with ethiopians as a whole beautiful people all chilling all doing what they need to do grinding through whatever this dude was off his game again i'm open i'm chilling but then again i don't have my lady with me <laughs> brother sub over here <laughs> he got his lady with him so this guy comes over and, and correct me if i'm wrong at any point my man comes over he's like i am i am uh i am very drunk and english is not good so uh, forgive me, but I want to say something to you. So, you know, open brothers, we're like, yeah, man, what's up? I want to say, uh, fuck you Americans. Yeah, right? Yeah, you said some shit like that, man. <laughs> and I said, oh, my goodness. My brother sub was like, what'd you say? And I was like, no, 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 man, just chill, just chill. Because he could mean something else. I don't know what the fuck he could mean, but I just saw, like, the fire in your eyes, which I would have done the same thing if my lady was there. But my lady wasn't there, and you was there, and we some big brothers, and I'm like, if necessary, I could beat this dude's ass by myself so he could have my back. So I'm not tripping. So I'm going to give him a chance to, you know, resurrect themselves, say something different. So I was like, you want to say that again? You want to say something different, maybe? What you trying to say, man? He was like... I'm sorry, I'm sorry, 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 sorry. I'm like, okay, what's up? He's like, uh, what I mean is, um, American? Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, let me reiterate this, you know, like, that. I was, <laughs> so on, the, on another level, I just want to say fuck you. <laughs> you know, like, and we had done nothing. Like, nothing, man. No, we up in there spending our money. And thinking about buying some art. Just looking, appreciating. And the thing was, it wasn't even a show. Not even people we there. Was, we was up in there just like, yo, let's go have something to eat and a few drinks. Right. And then this is where we buy some art. So if you want to buy some art, take back with you. Right. Boom. Right. So then, <laughs> then my brother sub was like, hey, somebody's come get this dude right now. Right now. I was like, I like this dude. I like him. Can I handle shit? And it was all good. You know, they they came and, you know, they apologized and yeah. everything. And it was all crazy. But, you know, at that point, like, I, I don't know, you know, like you asked me, or like, where I'm from. You know, I'm from Harlem. You know, <laughs> born and raised. That's what's up, yeah. And, like, I'm not... In no way, shape, or form am I, like, tough guy, like Mr. Grimy, 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 or anything like that. But, you know, I like to know that if, like, if shit goes down, like, I mean, I'll do it by myself if I have to. But it's cool to know that I got somebody that got my back, you know? Oh, yeah. And, like, I just knew that from you, like, from that moment. I was like, oh, this dude ain't going to let me, like, because, you know, sometimes you be out with some people. No, and then they get to running. <laughs> it's like, you tell you, you ready to stand up, you turn around, it's like, gone. 
ridiculous. And let me be honest. <laughs> let me be honest. I've been that dude in the past sometimes when my workers try and get into stuff that it's not their turn to get into stuff. Sure. But, like, on that level, I was like, because, you know, when you travel, for me, I was traveling by myself. Yeah. You know, and I was just like, I got to be ready for whatever, you know. And we actually had, <laughs> I had this funny thing in, um, in Zanzibar. And I was with my brother Oba. Oba, me and Oba go way back. And yeah, but Oba's a lawyer, you know. Oba, a big dude, gym dude, like buff his stuff. But you know, he's he's a lawyer. He's trying to he's not trying to go to jail. And neither am I. But we uh we had some bar. It was like the most tragic example of like third world plastic surgery, just like sit there trying to trying to like get some dollars off of us. And we were like, no, 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 no. And then Zanzibar was trippy, man, because it was like, you know, sort of island culture. So you got all these island dudes, you know, trying to, I don't know how to say it, like, uh, put their bodies out there for these white women tourists. Oh, yeah, sure. You know what I mean? So when you was in Zanzibar, like, um, was this like cross the bridge? Oh, this is, in, yeah, on the island. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And, um... You know, all of a sudden, and it's like they all doing these weird things to try and get these white women. You know, some of them is like the Rasta Island dudes. Some of them is like, you know, the like UK dubstep Rasta. Like, dude, I was like, y'all from the same island, right? But whatever, I let it go. But then like the UK dubstep dude was trying to get into a fight with the like Rasta Jamaican dude over this white woman and which one's going to go home with them. And they look like they about to fight for real. <laughs> And, you know, my brother Oba's like, yo, we should go. And I was like, why should we go? <laughs> he's like, I don't want, he's like, because I don't want to be around if something jumps off. I'm like, what's going to jump off between these two scandalous individuals? Man, I ain't tripping on these people. But, you know, at the same time, he had a wife and everything. And I was like, okay, we can go. But, you know, he w- he's conflict avoided, you know, it, which is good, it. which is what you should be, you know, at all possible times. And by and large, that's what I am, too. But back to you, it was good that I was like, okay, well, if shit does go down, it's good to know that there's a positive yeah. cat there that can have my back. Most of the time, I'll be trying to chill. I'm, I'm like, I'm always trying to chill. Yeah. And there's always some cat. <laughs> well, not all the time, but, you know, on occasion, there's some cat. And you're just like, I got to test this, dude. Right. And it's like, you know what? Don't judge a book by the cover, dude. Like, you don't know, you don't know me until yeah. you walk the mile in my shoes. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, like like uh, like we were saying, like you know, like like when someone don't got your back, I've been in that situation too many times. So I was like, dude, like so, like if I'm gonna say something, I'm gonna say it. And like if you got my back, you got my back. If you right. don't, then so be it. I'm about to get it's about to go down. Right. If it, if they, if this other guy wants it to go down. Right. But if you got my back, it's on. Yeah. Like I have like my best friend, my man's like. He's like, if you ever get into a fight, you ain't even gonna get to fight him because I'm gonna jump in. I'm gonna <laughs> beat this dude down for you. I'm like, he's like, you gonna be mad at me? I'm like, <laughs> like oh man, right? <laughs> See, like, I'm not like, I'm not that dude. I'm not trying to like, rah, rah, I'm not trying to fight shit about this for you. But if like, I, you know, that's what I appreciated was like, you were like, okay, no, now it has to happen, and yeah. I was like, okay, so I guess it has to happen now, yeah. you know. Cause I mean that was that was a wild situation. <laughs> that cracked me up. <laughs> but other than that, man, like we still had a hell of a good ass time. We had a you good know? ass time in part. I mean, that was just that. that was just the same night, right? Yep. And we went somewhere else. Yep. Man, I for, I don't even remember that night, man. <laughs> I know we went somewhere. We went to this jazz club. Yeah, we went to the jazz club. We went to a cafe. Yep. You went to like a more traditional spot too. Oh, that spot, yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. I think we got sick off of that spot. I think I might have got a little sick too, but we drank I didn't too care. much. No, I didn't care. We drank too much touch. Yep. <laughs> so it was, it was, it was great, man. Like I just, yeah. So you and the lady, you know, like y'all in my heart, you know, just it was, it was beautiful having you there. I mean, just have visitors to come see us that far away, yeah, and then. Uh, and to like uh, even like embrace someone that that we never even met. That's and right. It's like wow, we invited someone in our house that we don't know, but at the same time, like man, just the love and the vibes that that came from you. It's like you know what? I don't. 
I can't understand how we don't know this dude. Right, right. You know what I mean? That like, was my thing. I was like, no, nah, I know this dude. I've seen him somewhere. I know I, I know I know this dude. Where do I know I was him like, you've been in the upper room, remember? Like, yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah I've been down, there, you know? know? And then it was like, you know, everywhere. The upper room is an old school Bay Area joint that all the cool black kids used to go back to in the 90s. There you go. And, uh, you know, you just watch the real world. You know, that's when we was, oh, dude, I just watched that. I was, my uh, my lady was. was it, uh, season one? No. No, see, uh, the L.A. You know, you know what's wrong? My, my lady wanted to see the one with Tupac on it. Oh, what? Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Because him and Jada were tight. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's the LA, the LA season. Yeah. When Ooh, yeah, that was yeah. the last season. When man choked that other dude mm-hmm. out. <laughs> and everybody looked like there was like a backup dancer for TLC. I was like, what is happening? Oh, it was hella right TLC. Now? It was know? hella t- like wear your wear your um your button down shirt tied up around your waist mm-hmm. and a midriff. And just like grimy ass girls, just straight coming at dudes. I was like, "What is this?" <laughs> I'm like, "Oh yeah, that's what he was doing." I mean, that you know, I'll be honest, I wasn't doing that. But, but it used to go down like that. It used that. to go down like that. <laughs> it was funny, man. Um, I was talking. I was talking to my lady the other day. Like, there are so many times in like black culture where I felt like the black cultural refugee because I was like. Mm. I wasn't picking up on the commercialized stuff. No, I know what you mean. You know, and I think, like, cats thought that, like, I was positive because of that, you know, like, and, like, I'm not common, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not, I'm not that positive brother, but I just, I don't know, it just never worked for me. You know, I hear you. I mean, you know, like, you march to the beat of your own drum, you know what I'm saying? It's like, like me, I'm, I'm, like, the same way. It's like, I've always been like kind of like a loner, mm-hmm. so I've just figured out myself. Right, and I'm like I'm comfortable with doing me. Yeah, if you don't like that, then that's what it means to be a writer. I feel I'm gonna like. do it over here. Oh, y'all could do what y'all do over there. I was just convinced. I was like, well, I guess I'm, you know, because I, I, mean, I grew up in Harlem. I grew up in like, and a bunch of Puerto Ricans and Dominicans, you mm-hmm. know, and like, and all the, it was like this. Uh, not war, but like you claimed your side. I got you. you. Know, the black kids claimed that you know, you know, blackness, and the Puerto Ricans claimed Puerto Ricanness, and the Dominicans claimed the Dominican or whatever. And I didn't claim shit, you know, because I was in the gifted and talented classes and stuff. Yeah, you know. So they were like, "Why are you always with them white girls?" And I was like, mm, "They in my class." Are you think you better than us? Yeah, right. Exactly. What you, what you think you're better than us, man? <laughs> hmm? oh, we're yeah. gonna get we're gonna get some some chicken, some pollo on rice, man. Oh, yeah. Pollo your rolls, man. Nah, I mean, it was funny, like, the old Puerto Rican dudes, like, that I used to go to school, they'd be like, hey, 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 little boy, little boy, come here, come here, you know what I get for you? I give you a dollar. You take a dollar, you go buy a comb, comb your hair, okay? Oh, man, come, here. come oh, on, my son. Straight <laughs> clowning me on the regular. I was like, but I didn't even do nothing to you. Yeah. You know? But Bored Puerto Ricans. Bored Just Puerto like, Ricans. oh, man, I ain't got shit to do. I'm I give you take... a dollar, you comb your hair, okay? <laughs> Well, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna stereotype tape all Puerto Ricans. I mean, but them cats was bored. I will and tell they you was this. fucking with you, man. <laughs> for a long time, the most beautiful thing in the world was a Puerto Rican girl in the cold waiting for the bus, just shivering, just shaking, just shaking. I was like, <gasps> I think I reached puberty. You know? <laughs> so, what was it like growing up in the Harlem, man? I mean, like, like when, when, when was this era? This is, I mean, this, okay. So, I was born in '74. Yeah. So the way I can put it, because I'm just thinking about your records here, okay? So the record store in Juice, if you oh, remember the record store in Juice. Oh, I watched that movie way too many times, dude. That's the that's the place where I bought my first album, which was Off the Wall, and I played it on my uh, Play School record player. Oh, that's what's up. Off the Wall is in here <laughs> Yeah, somewhere. I know. I saw it. I, I was, like, attracted to it. It was over here somewhere. <laughs> Right? Uh, you remember New Jack City? Yeah, yeah. That's where my boy Ob- Oba grew up in those projects. Okay. You know? Okay. And it was, I mean, it was cutty as but uh, um, The pizza joint in um, The Last Dragon. Oh, <laughs> really? Yes, right down the block from my mom used to oh, work. Oh, man. So you like having to like dodge show enough? <laughs> <on the road. laughs> I would have been okay. That movie theater where he walks in, about the meanest, show enough. Am I the prettiest? Show enough. Am I the baddest mo fomo down around this town? Show enough. Who am I? Show enough. The Shogun. 
Harlem. What's up? Oh, man. That theater, I saw like Rambo First Blood Part 2 in there. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's what's up, man. Yeah. And yeah. then, like, that's where I saw all my, um, all the Shaw Brothers movies. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. All that. So, yeah, I mean, I grew up in it. I grew up in that, in that whole spot. But then when I was 13, I kind of like, I don't know, like, I had started um, hanging out like more in the village. Mm -hmm. Um, And I had started hanging out like in the Lower East Side and stuff. And Mm. it was just like. um, What was that like back in that time? I mean, cutty as fuck. Like, Like not, not as, not, not like it is today. Alphabet City was like, like, I remember having this thought, like I saw this tranny blowing this dude in the middle of the street. And my thought was, why can't you do that on the sidewalk? Not like, why can't you do this? Yeah, Not like, like why, why y'all doing that? Like, you can get hit by a car and move to the side, <laughs> you know? Um, you know, you have to go down, you know? It's like, shit. <laughs> like, is that necessary? It's like, man, sidewalk, that's too far away. It's going down right, <laughs> right now. Here. <laughs> right here. <laughs> need this now. I paid my $3.37, you know? <laughs> Busting out the chains. Uh, <laughs> 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 but, yeah, I mean, that was the... Um, that was my, uh, like, I, I went down there because I just felt like, you know, one of the things that I, I, I can't stand is, like, judgment. I just felt like everybody was judging me in Harlem. Like, because, yeah. like, I, again, not in the fashion, not into the, like, the woo, the woo, the woo, you know, like, I read books, you know, I went to the library, you know, like, I, you know, I was a geek. I was complete, I read comic books. I was complete and total geek. Man, I wish I still had, like, my comic book collection. I was, like, Often comic books too. <laughs> I mean, that was, uh, I mean, that got me literate. Mm-hmm. You know, that got me interested in like mythology. That got me into history. That got me into like culture. You know, like I was, you know, any parent that's like now parents are like, oh, you know, it's cool when my kids read, you know, comic books or whatever. But like when I was a kid, it was still kind of like, well, what, you know, is he stunted or something? I'm no, like, they, yeah. People used to hate on me for that. They were like, man, what, you know, you can read a book. I'm like, <laughs> I mean, there's words in these. Sure, they got pictures, but like, I read the words too. Yeah, and I start. That's how I started reading books. Yeah, you know. I so, mean, the comic book started me on all of this. Yep. I wrote yep. lyrics because, like, I read and like I found these words. I was like, "What does uncanny mean?" Exactly. Oh, that exactly. was the first word. I was like, "Oh, what is?" I was like, uncanny. <laughs> right. Uncanny. I'm like, wow. What is what does that mean, dude? I uh, I still remember a Doctor Strange spell. A word? Yeah. Whole oh, snap. See, yeah. I didn't get deep into Doctor <laughs> Strange, but that's dope, though. See, because like, and that's the other thing. Like, comics also had the art, and like, once you started getting into the art, mm-hmm. like, I found like old like Steranko, like, cause like there were like the comics, and then they had like this shit bin, right? Like the bin of just like crappy, crappy comics. Yeah. They have torn covers, but the art is still intact. So I'm seeing old Steranko, like Jim Steranko, Doctor Strange's, got right? It, got and it. where it's, it's just like photo layers on top of like color palettes and like just all stuff. And I'm like, I don't. This is gorgeous. Yeah. You know, and it's twenty five cents. Wow. Do you know what I mean? Like you don't you don't really get that anymore. No. You know. You know what I've been watching lately? You know, I don't want to get too far off the off the point. Got subscribed to this Marvel channel on uh, YouTube. Okay. And it showed how to draw. Well, not how, how, how this guy draws. Right. The guy drawing, um, I forget who it was, but he, draw, he drew a man thing. Yeah. And the way he drew it, he drew it and he inked it. He used watercolors. Mm-hmm. He used like every medium there was. Mm-hmm. And I was like, wow. That ain't just like, oh, I'm going to take some Sharpies and like some Prisma colors. And, you like, can't. No. You can't. I mean, you do And that. even, like, airbrushed a little bit, too. I was yeah. like, yo, this is, this right. is fly. You can't. If you go lightweight on comic art, it comes through. Yeah. And there's so many hungry cats that are putting time and effort and energy into their pages that you just look like a buster, you know? So I came up, like, looking at these folks being like, I'm looking at art. I'm looking at art, and I'm looking at words on a regular basis, trying to figure out how this merge works. You know what I mean? Sure. So that's where my head was at. And 
that's when people were wearing uh, gazelles and gold chains. And you know, yeah, Pumas. I know what you mean. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, and don't get me wrong, I love you know, my Adidas, like me and Oba, I used to run around the house like singing that song, you oh, know, yeah. like all the time, the whole freaking album. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, I, I, I was an Adidas freak for a minute, you know, and that didn't stop me, like, that didn't stop me from reading them comic books. No, stuff. Of course, no, and there was this merge, but like. People didn't want to talk about that. Like there was like, oh, that's just some that's some geek shit, you know, or like that's some like little kid stuff. So I was just and I was reading like Elf Quest and weird shit. You know. <laughs> so, I hear you all. Like, what's that one? Um man, I used to read all kind of different ones. But I mean, definitely I was off them off the X Men. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, for real. Like I really wasn't into Spider Man. See, this is what I like about Spider Man though. And this is how Spider Man can save us all. Um, Spider Man was a working class white dude. True that. His costume was always ripped. He oh, had yeah. he couldn't afford webbing. He would have he would have he, okay this dude. I mean he was always working on this stuff. It wasn't like just made, you <laughs> know. Done. It wasn't like oh uh, Iron Man, right? You know what I'm saying where where the computer can just work on itself. Exactly. Like he's like I have to go home and get on the sewing machine. I gotta help Aunt May pay rent. You know what I'm saying? Let me web this camera up here so this fool J. Jonah Jameson can make me look like a fool as I'm out here trying to save you know the Daily man. Bugle at damn self from the freaking mutant named the damn Rhino. Like you know if I'm, I was I'm trying like, to go, I'm going I'm trying to go viral here. You dude, know what I mean? And, and get paid. <laughs> you know? <laughs> he's like, but I'm trying to, I'm set my I'm my own hater. You know, like that was Spider Man trying to just make a living. No, I mean I feel that, but but I, mean, I hear you on that. They were just like, ooh, Wolverine, and then you get all to deep into their like everybody's thing, you yeah. know. And then I used to like those uh, Marvel Universe handbooks. Oh yeah. Oh man, just read school. those. Like I didn't even school. Just straight school. It's like yeah. man, just like encyclopedias of of superhero. Dude, I would read. Okay, so I would go through them, mm. and I would read the ones that I liked. Yeah. And then I would go back. <laughs> I read about the dudes I didn't like. True that. Just because I wanted to see it again. Or just and and like the like how they would talk about like uh their headquarters and yep. all that stuff. It's like, yep. yeah, and this this place is based on the top of the, the Empire State Building. Right. Right at the base of the needle. And, and then and then for me, growing up in New York, you know, I'm like, you know, not real, but on I feel like on some unconscious level, I just keep my eyes up because I was like, shit. Iron Man, could, Thor could be going what by. What if, you know? Like, you know? What if? <laughs> what you know? if? So, yeah, so I was I was that kid, and then, like, you know, I had a lot of, I also had, like, a lot of queer friends. Sure. Um, and these were, like, you know, these dirty-ass, <laughs> dirty-ass, grimy, you know, white kids who, like, left home because, like, you know, daddy didn't want them to know that they was gay or whatever, or, like... You know, just all this shit, and they would just be out in the street, like, straight hustling, and just, like, you know, just just turning tricks with dudes, and, like, all this shit, and, like, you know, it was just, like, I hung out in Washington Square Park, in Tompkins Square Park, like, all the time, and then um, there was this riot, because I forgot who it was, like, somebody somebody complained about noise, or violence, or, or home, or whatever, Whatever I, they feel like complaining about. Exactly. Yeah. And the police, like, came through. And they didn't come, like, they came through swinging. Like, they just came through, like, they, you know, this little tranny girl, they busted her head open. Fucking A, man. You know what I mean? And, like, I was, like, you know, like, I knew her, you know? Yeah. And, like, it was just all the shit. And I remember, like, there's this big queen I used to hang out with all the time and, like, you know, she she be like she be playing double dutch. Right? All right, for sure. <laughs> she was playing double dutch, right? And dudes she turning and jumping. Yep. <laughs> you know, like doing all of it. You know, she's like, oh, I got this. But like, you know, big, big. You know, and they, you know, cats be like faggot. And she'd be like, that's the faggot that can whoop your ass. You say that again, and I was like, God damn. But she, you know, like same thing. Like she went down, and like that was crazy. Like that fucked me up. And then, um, you know, HIV, AIDS. Yeah. Was, I mean. Talk about plague, you know, like, I didn't even, like, you could see somebody on Thursday Mm -hmm. chilling. Tuesday, they're dead. You know, and I was like, the fuck? Because, I mean, you know, no antiretroviral, I didn't know shit about that. No, no, I mean, you know. I mean, you're in it, and you don't know, and then you 
you know, something's wrong with you, but then it's like, whatever. Whatever, because you, know? you, you, you're on the street anyway. Yeah. You know, and then boom, 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 and then dead. And then crack. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's like, that's like, that's like episode three, dude. <laughs> you know, attack of the crack. <laughs> attack of the crack, man. God so damn. it was, I mean, that, like, you know, I grew up around heroin fiends because they were just everywhere and they just nod. You know, they just lean, you know, they just like, uh, crackheads be coming at you you know like your best friend or whomever you know could be your homie and then like two minutes later i'm like where'd my tv go I, you know but they high they high <laughs> you know for 15 minutes or so right you know you like know? where did you just steal a nigga's chain just to, thank you just straight snatch a chain <laughs> just, just like just snatch a purse you know what i mean like just gangster about it and so it was just like new york at the time like i left new york like 87, 88. And I was like, yeah, because this is some, like, I can't mess with this. Like, I'm not okay with everything going on. Uh, that's some old down by law shit right there, right? <laughs> you, you know, know what I'm saying? Cats wearing kangos <laughs> out here just beating the shit out of people, yep. you know, pulling out tools. Yep. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, I remember being on, you know, waiting on a train and I, you know, this dude walking with his chick, you know, and I didn't get out the way because I was like, I ain't getting out the way. And just, like, you know, just flash of steel on me. I was like, I mean, you know, like, I was just like, I guess if that's, is that what happens now, nigga? You know, and his girl was like, why are you trying to mess with him? He's just reading his comic books. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know he like comics? Damn, I'm sick of this shit. Every time we go out, you got to shoot somebody. You know, and I was like, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, girlfriend. You know, so I, I went to boarding school in New Hampshire, man. Okay. Like, I cut out. So, so how was that like? <laughs> um, I mean, you go from you go from the city, like just like, and then you go to New Hampshire, like so boarding school, like out yeah. in the cut, yeah. in the in the, in the, the it's the literally Roman. called the White Mountains. It's the White Mountains of New Hampshire. Wow. So, yeah. like, there's like a road you roll up to, and there's these gates. No, it know? was like you drive in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. For like forty five minutes. Mm. And then, like, you just come upon a general store and then another little store. And then you just, like, if you, and then, like, on this, like, that's on your left and on your right is the school. And if you blink for, like, a minute and a half, you miss it. Oh, snap. Okay, I got you. So then when you when you stop and you get out the car <laughs> and you look to your right, you see there's this whole campus behind it that goes into the mountains. Wow, wow, But, wow. like, you could drive by <laughs> You know, like you could drive. Like there's no sign. It's like, yo, it's school over here. Nope, just boom. That's just you know, bada boom. That's it. So, um, yeah, I went there, and um, that was some, that was some interesting shit, man. Yeah. <laughs> like I, I mean, I you know, so I'm always reading, right? I'm always reading. This is my life, right? So my English class. The uh, first day, the first day of English class, I tell you know, um, I see the syllabus. And I tell the teacher, I was like, um, you know, I've I think I'm in the wrong English class because I've read all these books. And this dude said to me, I'll never forget this. He said this real life. He said, "We read differently here." Oh uh, yeah. And I'm so new. Yeah. I'm so open. I'm like, okay. Tell me how you read. Yeah, I mean, like, what they read back to front. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like, shit, I've been doing this wrong my whole you know, right, life. Right to left. <laughs> you know, I'm like, these white people obviously know stuff that we don't know. I'm here to learn these secret lessons about reading. Yes. Okay, white man, tell me, like, how, how do, how do, how am I supposed to read? He's like, oh, we read for content, and then we read for style, and then we read for, like, um, cadence. And, and I was like, no, nah, that's how I read too, Playboy. Like, I I know how to read, mother. I can't, but you dirty ass. You know, like I got so angry because I was like, I know how to read, damn it. Yeah. And he's like, Well, you know, can you write a paper for me? I'm like, Yeah, I can write a fucking paper for you, man. Dude, I can read. I can write. I can even speak the way you, I read you, and write. You know what I mean? You know, like, that's wild. And then it was like the first week there, I had written a play. Cause I had never had a computer before to just like bang out on, so I just like, you know, wrote a play and then produced it that, um, and it was crazy ass play, but um, produced it for that winter, 
you know? So the resources were great. The expectations were weird. You know what I mean? Got it. Um, but I'll say the good thing about it was, like, I was crazy. Like, man, I, w- <laughs> I walked around, I think it was either my junior or senior year. I want to say maybe my junior year. I walked around with a crowbar. Yo. <laughs> Is she like the Punisher up in there? It is like, I yo, it. wait till my van rolls up. You know, like where's where's the microchip when I need him? <laughs> 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 no, so I um, so I was like I was in the drama department. And yeah, it's like drama tech, right? And they were like, yo, go get you know, like we need wood and this and that, did whatever. And man, I swear it was like a summoning. Like I was in the hardware store and I went and I saw a crowbar and I was like. How much is that crowbar right there? <laughs> the guy was like 10, 29. I was like, yeah, yeah, give me that. Give me. And right, I mean, right behind you over there, I got my pry bar. You, mm, I want the crowbar. He's right out there. the crowbar, you know what I'm saying? You know, I need that. Oh. And like, I, man, I had that thing hanging off my belt loop, like on a regular. And folks would be like, what? Is that a crowbar? I'm like, yep. And they're like, why do you have a crowbar? I'm like, in case something needs crowing. And they were like, "What?" I'm like, "Don't worry, about hey, don't it. worry about it." When you, when when stuff needs crowing, and y'all don't know what to do, remember, exactly, I got one. But then, so, I'm this crazy ass <laughs> nigga in fucking New Hampshire walking around with a crowbar. Do you know what I mean? I mean, you like out like at that general store with that too. Yes, Playboy. I did not leave the fucking room without the crowbar. Oh snap! Like That's I, player, player, right there. You know? Like, no man. And they were like, um, you know, and I like got called into the assistant head of school. She was like, so like, can we separate you from the crowbar? Like, well, she was just trying to get the knowledge. She was like, so why do you? Can you tell me why you have a crowbar? And I mean, you know, you're young. You know what the fuck you doing? I pulled out the crowbar. I pretended like the crowbar was talking. I was like, crowbar, why do I have you? Crowbar is like, well, maybe because you're the only black man that you've seen. <laughs> In like the past eighteen months, I think it's because I'm the only black man that I've seen in like eighteen months. It's <laughs> like, okay, so now I don't know what to do. You know, like just confused by my whole game. But I think, like, you know, I work at an independent school. I work at a private school now, <laughs> fucking independent. And like, I think that was like the realest shit I ever did. Like talking about my experience, you know, because I was just like my first. Um, and cut me off whenever you want to cut me no, off. No, man, I'm 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 trying to hear about this crowbar because I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I might have to re reinvent that. You know, right. it's like just start rolling around with that. I mean, my 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 dream was always to like rock the machete. Oh, I got one in the car. <laughs> I got word one in the up, car, one in the house. <laughs> I'll take every day. I don't play. I don't that's play, man. That's what's up. Just man. so you know. So I came in as a sophomore. They had a thing called Freshman Friday. It was the first Friday. When it snows, seniors can take freshmen and throw them in the snow. Hmm. Right. So I'm coming back to my dorm as a sophomore. True that. And I just hear that somebody running in the snow. And it's dark because it's fucking New Hampshire. Sure. And I'm the only black dude in fucking New Hampshire. And then I hear on the other side, so we run. I was like, the fuck? Coming out of New York, coming out of fucking Alphabet City, kind of, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And I was like, "Fuck, I don't have my blade with me." I was so mad. Somebody like comes up. I'm like, "Fuck this!" Like elbow to the freaking jaw. I don't see who it is. Other person like tries to like side swipes me, like hits me in the thigh. Like I go down, but I like grab them with me, and I'm like shoving their face in the snow, like punching them in the snow. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like getting it, you know? Like I'm like, "Oh fuck, that ain't going down. You going down? Ah. Right? And they're like, "What the hell, man?" <laughs> Like and it's these. Like you're supposed to go down, man. Right. <laughs> now keep in mind, I had no idea about no fresh. I mean, like I knew about it, but I was like, motherfucker, I'm a sophomore. Yeah. I'm not a freshman. Yeah. So I'm in trouble my first two weeks at the school. And they're like, you know, well, you got in a fight. I'm like, I didn't get in a fight. Two people attacked me. Sure. And they were like, no, it's a freshman fight thing. I'm like, I'm not a freshman. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. So, <laughs> so, so, so basically, yes, yeah, school. The, the administration allows hazing, and they're like, uh, 
you know, you're supposed to let that happen to you. The early 90s, yo. Oh, my goodness, man. You know, I was like, you've been watching the wrong movies. Like, I am not that. This is not a John Hughes flick. This is a Spike Lee flick, man. Like, you don't. Hey, man, I, I had that same thing but my freshman year. I, I moved up to the Bay Area from L.A., mm-hmm. and this guy decided that he was, I was going to be his personal beatdown. Mm-hmm. And this didn't even last that long. He So we had PE together. And we had swimming for our, for our unit. Mm. He's like dunking me in the pool and all this stuff. I'm like, whatever, you know, we're in the pool. Mm. So it's all good. The next day I roll up to school, he comes up to me talking about, like, I get off the bus with all the black kids mm. that, that, that um, you know, because we kind of lived near each other. So I get off the bus, and then uh, he comes up to me talking about, what's up, man? What's up? You know, some white dudes, just like big ass. Like, I'm six feet now. Mm. He was six feet then. <laughs> Like looking like a grown ass man. It's just on you. Mustache, all this shit, you know. It's on me. So like the, you know, the other brothers, they was like, What's yeah, up, man? You yeah. need wants to handle this? I'm like, nah, it's all good. So I go to my locker, I come back out, and uh he's waiting for me in the in the courtyard. He's like, If you wanna fight, we can fight after school. And he throws his books in the bushes. I'm like, Man, where I'm from, when you throw your books in the bushes or whatever, we fighting right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he swings on me. I never, I never felt that much wind come by me ever. And I was like, I stepped back. I was like, it was (laughs) missed. He missed everything. (laughs) And I went all into that ass, you know, because I just moved. I just moved back to California from Baltimore. Oh, Baltimore don't play. Yeah, man. I was. I went there. I was in Baltimore for middle school. Mm. So you know, I mean, went from like being a nice little California kid to like. Haven't learned how to be grimy yep. and survive. Still reading them comic books. <laughs> right. You know, and then uh to to come back and like, you know, I had never I caught a I caught a few caught a couple of beatdowns in Baltimore, but not the not the kind of beatdown this dude was trying to give me. Yeah. Man, I whooped his ass. I mean, I don't even want to I don't that's the only fight I've really ever had to that magnitude. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know what? I'm good. I'm yeah. good. And I went to blind fury mode on him. And like people are like, man, you was like, oh man, it was all, oh, all, all man, all. I was like, oh, I don't remember all that. <laughs> to this day, I still don't remember none of that. I had a blind sort of white rage. I was like, after school special, my ass. <laughs> Forget all that. But yeah, yeah I hear we ain't you. gonna talk it out. <laughs> no, that's it, man. I, I hear you, man. You know, shit, you go into survival mode. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't. I wasn't like, like I'm Super Hulk. I was like, I, I hit dude like 20 times, and then like I ran, you know, into my dorm. I just didn't tell anybody about it because I was like, you know, whatever. Then Did they, they tell? Yeah, of course they told. I, that's how I got in trouble. That's how I got in trouble. <laughs> you know, I was like, why? I'm like, you. You got beat down, and you gonna tell. You started, mm. got beat down, and you gonna tell. A definition of bitch made. Do you know what I mean? So I was just like, well, okay, you know. And so from then, there was just this really weird relationship between me and, like, the school where I was like, hey, man, I'm just trying to, like, get through this place. Yeah. You know, and I think, like, they, you know, they wanted some, like, oh, my God, I've never seen all these white people in my life. I'm like, dude, I'm from New York. I'm just surprised that our white people aren't Jewish. Sure. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm like, I ain't tripping on y'all. Y'all tripping on me. You know, like. No, y'all just surprised. Like, how many black people was up in there? You know, uh, nine. Nine, ten. exactly. You know. How'd you get there? Man, this is back when we had community programs, you know. Got it. So, the so like, some programs, like, uh just, just where you should go. Yeah, it's called the Dome Project. And, yeah. you know, uh, Jeff Paquette, he went on to help make City Year national. Mm-hmm. Um, another guy, Sean Dove. I still need to reach out to Sean Dove and just say, you know, what's up? I'm still alive. Thank you. He did, like, a 100 black men. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I know about that. Yeah, that dude, like, Sean Dove was like, was like I mean, you know, I didn't, I didn't, you know, as I'm getting older now, I'm realizing I need to go back to these people and be like, hey, I was a dick as a child. <laughs> and, um, you know, I need to I need to get on my humble and be like, I just want to I want to let you know that I appreciate everything that you did for me, because those cats 
And, and, you know, Sean was going through his own shit at the time, but, like, he came through on the other side of it, and, you know, bless him for that. But um, but still, to point you in the right direction, you know what I mean? Like, whether whether you wanted to or not. I did not want to. You know what I'm saying? I was compl- – look, I mean, you know, the part I'm not saying is that, like, I was – you know, I had a year of like cocaine is a very, very fun drug, and let's see how <laughs> okay. much. Okay. You know, like <laughs> yeah, and young. Sure. You know, young sure. and dumb, and like I, you know, like doing some stupid shit. And it was Jeff. Jeff sat me down, and he's like, "Who's the, who's the oldest dude you know on this, uh, on the, in the street doing what you're doing?" I'm like, "Little Mike." I'm like, he's like, "How old is Little Mike?" I'm like, twenty five. He's like, "How old are you?" I'm like, thirteen. He's like. That's that's what you got. You got twelve years. He's to like and be, just to be Lil Mike, right? He's yeah. like, and just so you know, I'm thirty two. <laughs> He's like, I don't have a car. I'm not all flashy, but I'm thirty two. That's what's up. And I was like, oh, you know, and like Jeff was was great, you know, and like I mean, again, I hate judgment, and these cats sort of accepted me where I was at. You know, I was smart, but I was grimy. I was like motivated but i was like hustling you know i was poor you know like i was you know i haven't taken money from my mom since i was 14 and i got you so when you was like to go back a little bit when yeah. you was like out in um alphabet city and whatnot you were on your own like or just like kind of like a runaway or something yeah man. yeah yeah man. yeah I, um mom is cool you know like she's a good person um we didn't really get along. I hear you. I hear you. You know, we just, we're, we're like, we just, you know, even today, like, I don't really talk to her that much. You know, I don't really talk to her. Yeah, it just, it, we weren't, it just wasn't cool. You know, that last year in New York, I was, um, I was mostly on my own. And then, like, when I talked to Jeff and he was like, yeah, you know, like, if you want to go to these programs, your mom has to sign stuff. And I was like, Shaf. you know, and I talked to my mom and I was like, hey, let me go to boarding school. You know, like, you know, want me out doing stuff. Let me just go to boarding school. Yeah. And uh, my cousins had gone to boarding school. And so she was like, okay, if you can get in. And so, um, you know, we we did the do. And, you know, as soon as I got in, I kind of went, you know, that's, I will say, like, you know, I have ambitions of making movies at some point. Um, I would love to do a movie of that final summer yeah, in New York for me because oh, that, would that be was fantastic. Like, I mean, have you written that? I haven't written it yet. No, um, you know, I'll. You know, it's like it's brewing. Nah, it's just like I've been so focused on fiction. Sure, sure. You know, because like there's so many. I mean, I don't know when we'll get to it, but like there's so much in my family that like I haven't. I never felt free to like talk about. And, like, because I didn't feel free to talk about it in my family, I didn't feel free to talk about my own experience, you know? Um, but now I'm like, fuck it, I'm grown. Like, <laughs> come get, like, you mad about what I say? Come get me. You know? Oh, yeah. You know, I hear you. I mean, on that level, like, there's a lot of stuff that I got to say to, like, you know, that I want to get off my chest. But, and I don't, and I'm not really even tripping off of people, like, having ill feelings towards that. It's like, look. I was on the other side of that. Right. And I got to let you know what I feel. Right. You know, like uh, like when we lived in Baltimore, man, our dad went to prison. Mm. And like, you know, he was there for like five years because mm. he shot somebody. Mm. And like, crack is a motherfucker, man. Yep. Crack is a motherfucker. Yep. Like, we moved to Baltimore because we were trying to escape crack. Yep. Well, it's not the move, you know. It <laughs> made crack was even worse. In Baltimore, may, may, maybe someplace else. <laughs> you know what I mean, like, like the Bahamas, Des Moines, or something. Iowa, something. something. But no, man, we yeah. Yeah. you went you went from the fucking frying pan and a fire. Yeah, and like I was like, oh my goodness, but you know what I mean, like yeah, you know I want to get some stuff off my chest too. You know? Well, I mean, my thing is like I don't really, I have no ill will to the folks who whatever. Sure. You know, sure. like, I, I, I honestly don't. My thing is, like, it, it happened. Like, y'all showed up mm-hmm. or y'all didn't show up, mm-hmm. right? I'm here. I'm okay. I'm living my life to the best of my ability. You know, I'm so blessed that, like, I'm in a relationship with somebody that, like, 
accepts me and like loves me, I ain't got time for the bullshit. Nah, I hear you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, you know, like, I want to make sure that that woman is happy. <laughs> like, I want to make sure that, like, my career starts going where I want it to go. Sure. Like, you, you're all about forwarding your progress right now. You know? And, like, the rest, you know, the, pe- the people that helped me get where I am now, mm-hmm. I want to say thank you. That's what's up. And everybody else, did you hear that silence? Dude, yeah, that's what's up, crickets. Hold on, let me say it again. That's what I got for everybody else. It's not. It's not mad. It's not anger. It's not. It's just. It is what it is. I, you know. It is what it is. You I know? hear you. You know what I mean. So. That's all it is. It's not. I mean, because I don't. Have, I mean, you know, I get. I get pissed at people driving on the freeway. I don't get pissed at people that fucked me over 15, 20 years ago, twenty five years ago. I ain't got time for y'all. No, I hear you. I mean, <laughs> like, man, that's like it's a glimpse. You know what I'm saying? It's like, man, you know, just you blink. 20 years can go away. Done. You know what I mean? Like, Done. And you can't get it back. You know, I hadn't seen my dad for like 20 years. <laughs> yeah. Like from 88 to like 2008. Jesus. And only time, only reason why I went to go see him, because we were out there, and I wanted him to see his grandkids. See his kids, yeah. You know, so other than that, like I was like, he would chime in every now and then, but like I wouldn't like really pursue it. Right. You know, like that's cool. But I wasn't mad at him. I, like that had already came and gone. Okay, so you ready for the so so? There's lots of reveals. Yeah, so I'll give you one reveal. All right. So my dad is Matula Shakur. All right. All right. Right. So he raised Tupac. That's what's up. Okay. You know, um, and I didn't know this till I was 25. You know. So let's let's rewind it back. Y'all <laughs> y'all heard the, y'all heard the that. man right? <laughs> y'all heard the man. Yeah. So that's my dad. Tupac lineage right here, you know what I'm saying? See, but that's the thing. It's like, you know, I only knew about it after he died. Sure. You know, I didn't know about it before. The best thing out of all of it has been I've got two sisters out of it. Mm -hmm. And they're really good people. You know what I mean? Like, they're, I mean, there's more kids because Papa was a Rolling Stone. I hear you. But, like, you know, the two that, like, reached out and hung out with me, you know, like. Were they older or? Younger. Younger, okay. Yeah. And, you know, at 25, I was like, I'm my only child. I'm not trying to deal with y'all. Rah, 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 rah. I was an asshole. I'll admit it, you know. Um, it's only been, like, recently that I've been like, hey, look, you know, that was my bad. And, you know, you know, I had a whole bunch of other shit. Anyway, um, but, you know, so the other part of this is, like, you know, Matulu. Matulu, like, calling me and shit. And, like... You know, these old revolutionary cats, you know, he went in in 84, 86, I can't remember. Yeah, yeah, okay. And he ain't been out since, you know, and they keep, they keep fucking with him, you know, and I don't, you know, I, you can agree or disagree on his politics and whatever, but you're talking about an old ass black man who ain't got, got health problems. Yeah, I'll still keep him in jail because of what? Because Giuliani helped put him away, and Giuliani want to keep him away. Yeah, old, another old another ass Another old man. fart. You know what I'm saying? But, like, you know, last time I talked to <laughs> Matula, it was funny. I'm going to fuck him up because I'm going to just do his impression. He was like, hey, man, brother, I just want to let you know, you know, everybody out here, you know, we, we made our mistakes when we was younger. We just doing the best we could, man. That's all we could do. We just doing the best we could. So, you know, I got love for you. You know, if we, if we got hostilities between us, it ain't even a thing, you know, for me because I got love for you and I hope, you know, you spreading the love for all of me. And and I'm like, hey, man, ain't nobody got, hey, how am I going to be angry at that you? I don't know you. I'm 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 mad at you. I, I, come on, man. Hey, you know, man, that's that's how incarcerated brothers talk, man. <laughs> yeah, I know. And even when they post incarcerated, they still talk like exactly. that. Exactly. You know, my dad reads the newspaper from tip to tip. Nice. Because he had that time. And that's all he talked. Yeah. He's like, I've been writing letters to Obama. I do be listening to DMX. Um, He's always quoting DMX. No, look, DMX is my nigga. I don't care what anybody I, says. I, now and forever. That's my dude. But like for my dad to be like quoting DMX, <laughs> I'm like, yo, man, like, <laughs> like I feel you where your dogs is at, man. Like <laughs> the bullshit, the drama, the guns, the armor, the cities, the mamas, the babies, the dramas. It's like, okay, but you gonna say anything about these things? Nah, you just nah, gonna just, just list them. I put it out there. Right. Y'all speak on that. Exactly. Y'all know what I do. <laughs> no, no, I got I got love for DMX. I don't <laughs> yeah. give a shit. Nah, DMX. One love DMX. You know. 
But um, yeah, man. I'd love so. to have you on the black porch. For real. <laughs> For real. But so yeah, it's like all these um, you know, I got this, you know, this lineage, you know, these yeah. you know, these these cats. Man, they I think it's really hard for people to understand like the lit like not the glorified Hollywood black experience. Sure. But the like like the one black glove and the beret. Right. Like they, they dance every they they um dress everybody up to be a panther. You know what I mean? Yeah. It wasn't all panthers, man. No, I can imagine. Like my sister I mean I know. Yeah. Yeah. My sister grew up spreading, you know, peanut butter on the walls so that the FBI wouldn't take the fingerprints off the walls whenever she moved. Do you know what I mean? Like my birth certificate doesn't have my name on it because my mom didn't want me to so like my mom wanted me to be able to run when necessary. You That's what's saying? up. Yeah, I hear you. Wow. Like, I grew up with, you know, uh, the kids that I grew up with, mm-hmm. their parents were, like, leaders in the ANC, you know? And, like, they had been in, they had been, they had been in Ethiopia. They had been in Kenya training, you know, for the military. You know okay. what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. They used to, like, ooh, there was a, war, there was a, there was an attempt to, like, change the world. And it got beat the fuck back in the eighties. Oh man, the eight yeah, the eighties. <laughs> like if you wanted, yeah, it was like if done. you if you get, but like we were alive, you know. And that's what I was saying before. Like we have this legacy that we don't talk about because like it's been so commercialized and it's so been about hip hop. No, if, nothing against hip hop. No, sure, but it, it's not. It's, it doesn't have anything to do with like for real culture. You know what I mean? Like we had to invent a culture to be like okay. Uh, let's bring us up from rubble. Let's bring us up from right. all this aftermath that happened. Right in a city, which I understand that was that had that New York, basically New York in the in the in the early early the entire seventies. Yeah, New York was as close as the United States got to the rest of the world. It had been given up on. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It was bankrupt. Resources were not being allocated. Sure. Crime was running rampant. Housing was being destroyed. The rich were getting richer. The poor were getting poorer. It was as Guatemala was. It was as Somalia was. It was as Ethiopia. You know know, what I'm saying? Everywhere. Like all these places where it's like the great divide. Right. You know? So We have it. Y'all don't got it. Fuck y'all. You know? (laughs) If you can get it, cool. Cool. If not, don't touch me. Don't touch me. You know? So like New York looked like the rest of the world. The rest of the United States, yeah. you know, I mean, you know, and there was pockets, you know, Chicago, I'm sure was not doing all that freaking great. You know, L.A., I'm sure was not doing great. It wasn't doing that great. But, you know, the thing about L.A. Um, well, you always like, had the industry. Like, yeah. So, like, you could escape out of that if you decide how you're going to get out. Mm-hmm. But there wasn't really a beat down area. I mean, maybe Watts was. But, like, when crack came. That's when stuff like. I remember the first time I went to Compton. Yeah. Everybody was like, "Oh, Compton's rough." I was like, "How the fuck is Compton rough when there's houses everywhere?" Because okay, I'm from look, New York. Hey, let me let me even stop you there. There's a there's a horse ranch see what I'm saying? in Compton. See what I'm you saying? can ride horses in Compton. See what I'm you know, what I was saying? so confused. <laughs> I was like, "Wait, but they NWA's from here?" Like I was confused, and that but then, <laughs> but them. Who was it? It was my friend Derek or my friend Omar. I can't remember. He took me to the Slauson swap meet. Yeah. Man, that was like bad man. It's beyond the th- th- Thunderdome or whatever. I was like, these niggas is crazy. It's crazy. It's <laughs> right next to the train tracks. <laughs> you know? And like cats be getting their graffiti on over there. I you was know, as a kid, like the trains to go through there. Mm-hmm. They don't go through there no more. Where did it go? They moved the train and they moved the, the swap meet. No, the swap meet's still there. Okay. They call it something else now. It's not the swap meet anymore. It's uh, like okay. the, the, the Slauson Shopping Center or something <laughs> like that. What, whatever. Uh, but like just next to it, that train used to go through. And I used to love trains as a kid. So like when that train was stopped, I'm like, this is cool. But you know, that's the same trains that they had the crack on. That they had the recipe for crack. They had the guns with oh, the flimsy locks on it. So they just bam, grab, and move. Yeah, like you know, you know, I wouldn't say like 
those were the same trains. I wouldn't say that was the same area. Right. But that was the same freight trains that was going through, and mm-hmm. they just, like, left them there overnight. Freeway Ricky Ross. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yep. Here's some trains. What? Look, they got some cheap-ass locks on them. Got this. <laughs> you know what I'm got saying? Got this. Get- Oh, what's in here? Some Sandinista <laughs> equipment. And... Yeah, you know, I mean, it. That whole thing, man. I heard this a while ago. They said that between like, uh, don't quote me on this, but like at some point, there had been more deaths in South Central LA in like a given period mm-hmm. than there was um, in uh, between um, the Israelis and the Palestinians. Wow. And I was like, that's real. Because that, when I first, I first came out on a visit to L.A., I was fucking this girl, because, you know, um, and I was like, oh, y'all niggas is crazy. <laughs> I was like, I don't know why y'all have houses and machine guns, but y'all niggas need to calm down, because this shit's, this shit's a little live. Denver's headquarters, you know <laughs> what I'm saying? I didn't know. Yeah. My thing was like, you got it. You you know you got a building, you control who comes in the building, who go out the building. But you had a house, and it was like, you know, just dudes armed up all around it. And oh, I was yeah. like, it's like if you don't, if you ain't affiliated, don't step to the house. That's the black porch I don't want to be on. Yeah. But you know, there's many of those black porches yeah. out there. And that was, I mean, L. A. tripped me out because they were talking about colors, mm. and I was like, what? You know, I didn't know none of it. You know, I thought Colors was that movie. <laughs> I mean, that, yeah, Colors was that, yeah. I was like, y'all serious about it? I'm like, I'm going to get killed on a bandana. I mean, I didn't have any bandanas, uh, jeans and T-shirts. That's how I rolled. It's more the uniform, you know, and, like, so you wear the white T-shirt or a pen, or a Pendleton and the Dickies mm-hmm. and the Chuck Taylors yep. or, or, like, they used to wear crocus sacks. <laughs> yep. <laughs> crocus sacks, man, like, the crocus sacks, that, man, that's... Them some, they call That's them hobo. Knowledge. They call them hobos now. Exactly. But them exactly. are some homeless ass shoes, and, exactly. and you can buy them from the from uh, from the bodega. Yeah, the bodega. You can <laughs> yeah. buy them. From, yeah. So for us, you can buy them from like uh, JJ Newberry mm-hmm. for like five dollars. Yep. Have you wore those? Hell yeah. You was hard. <laughs> you was hard, man. It's like you instantly was hard. But understand, this is my broke ass budget clothing. No, exactly. You know, you know what what I mean? it's like I'm broke. <laughs> But it's like, hey, that's how you that's the uniform you could have because y'all broke. Be gangsters. Didn't know. I dressed like a gangster. Didn't know. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Same thing when I went to um London for the first time. Yeah. Just do I had dreads then. Okay. Right. Uh, yeah, what's up with that? Like I don't know, um I've only been to London once and I definitely wasn't like in any of those areas. <laughs> so I was in uh 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 Brixton. Okay. Right? Brixton's, like, was, I don't think it is anymore, was, was, like, black Caribbean Mm -hmm. neighborhood, Mm -hmm. right? I had my dreads, and I was doing my thing, you know, just chilling and, you know, fucking with DJs and stuff, and, you know, but just, just, you know, just weird heat off of the old folks, you know, elder folks and whatever. I was like, hey, no, I'm good, like... Just trying to buy a fucking beef patty, you know, like just you know, and then dude was like, "Yeah, well, you know, look like a yardy them." I'm like, "A what? My like, look like a yardy them." Yeah, <laughs> like, <"What?" laughs> yardy, yardy, yardy boy. I was like, "What is a yardy?" Right? I had no idea. And then I got my old boy, I'm gonna come over from Jamaica, you know, I'm gonna take a hit on a man, you know, whop whop in the head two time, where I'm go back to Jamaica, you know. I'm like. Oh, now I'm not trying to kill nobody, man. I'm just trying to play some records, you know? Like, I was not. But, like, it gave me the knowledge, you know? But there's a few times in my 20s where it was, like, wherever. Like, folks just had the wrong impression of me, you know? But I'll tell you where they, they got it right was in Morocco. Got it. You know, when I my senior year in high school, they had this abroad program in France. Okay. Um... And I went to there in, in Avignon. It wasn't in Paris. It was south of France. Avignon has this huge uh, Maghrebi, uh, North African mm-hmm. presence. So I'm in this bar, Pub Z. I'll never forget the shit. Um, Pub Z. And 
this dude is talking about. <laughs> this dude's talking about Jean Marie Le Pen. Okay, sure. He's the father of this Le Pen that's running for like French national sh- bullshit now. Got it. Got it. And I was like, fuck, fuck Le Pen, man. You know, like, I was like talking to my friend. I was like, fuck Le Pen. Like, fuck that racist bullshit. Rah, 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 rah. I might have even said, you know, he's just another Trump because Trump was big in New York at the time. Yeah. Um, and then these like three big white British dudes, uh, French dudes was like, what'd you say about Le Pen? I was like, I said, fuck Le Pen. And they were like, well, we support Le Pen and fuck you for saying that shit. If you want to say some shit, step outside. And I was like, well, usually I wouldn't because there's three of you, but I'm drunk. So, <laughs> so I was like, fuck this shit. So like they're outside and I'm like, all right, what's up? You know, let, like, let's do this. And they're like, now we're cool. I was like, I was like, come on then, like, who's, and they just, like, backed off, and I was like, yeah, I'm like, I'm so hard, and I look behind me, and there's, like, eight, like, huge-ass, like, Algerians and Moroccans behind me, and I was like, oh, yeah, oh, what's up, how you doing, (laughs) and they were like, yeah, yeah, because, like, they, they had just been taking shit for so long, sure, sure, and they were like, who the fuck are you Dark little weird dreaded oh my goodness child, <laughs> and I was like, I'm from America. We don't take shit. We the shit, you know, like just a little, you know, talking too much smack. So, oh, that's my book right there. I mean, has that got that's anything to do with that? That's my, <laughs> right there. That's my man over here. Hey, I'm not, son. I'm not super well versed, but you know, I got, uh, I got tidbits of things. You know, what I'm just, saying? my brother just pulled out the Wretched of the Earth by Franz Fanon, so I have to read the first sentence of concerning violence. You ready? Here we go. Do it. National liberation, national resistance. The restoration of nationhood to the people, commonwealth. Whatever may be the heading used or the new formula introduced, decolonization is always a violent phenomenon. That's my nigga. That's what's France up, Fanon man. is my That's nigga. What's up. Like, I don't give a fuck what <laughs> anybody says. France Fanon, Black Skin's White Mask. That's my fucking book. A Dying Colonialism. That's my shit. The Wretched of the Earth. That's my shit. Franz Fanon is my nigga. Sorry. That's what's up, man. <laughs> um, so- I'm like, because when you start talking to Morocco, and I was like, man. And then that also like makes me think more of like uh, liminal people and mm-hmm. liminal war and all that stuff. And so- I was like, because you got, you got up in there with that. You know, yeah. I, could, I could, like the way you wrote, I could see. You know what I mean? Like, because that's kind of how I read. I, I mean, maybe other people read like that. Yeah. But I totally read like that, where it's like, I see what I'm reading. Yeah. You know? I mean, if that, thank you, because that means I did my job. Oh, man. Yeah. I mean, I seen, like, how, I don't, I don't, I ain't going, I'm not going to get into the, y'all need to go get the book, dude. <laughs> I mean, the he book has been the, out for so long. You can I, talk, say whatever you want I, about I, it now. I guess, man, you know. You know? But, man, my favorite part was, like, when, uh. It was Taggart, right? Yeah. When he was walking across the desert. Oh, yeah. 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 People like that. I like that. Yeah, and he starts, like, just healing anybody that comes his way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And then there was, like, the, the uh, then, you know, it's been a while since I read it, but, like, uh, where they were talking about, like, you know, I guess a, a group of people came up to him and it was like, yo, you can't be healing people all the time, you mm-hmm. know? <laughs> Like, you got to cut that shit out. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, okay, whatever. Healed you. He- Next. Boom. I, I already read you. Done. You know? I some saw, cookies, I, nigga. What? I healed you before you even came up to me. The, Morocco, like, changed my world. You know? Like, the, yeah. those cats were, like, super cool, and they, you know, they took me in, and they, like, you know, I, I went to Morocco. With, I went to France with, like, no money. Wow. And they were like, we got you, you know? And they're like, are you Muslim? I'm like, no. They're like, yeah, you are. Would you be Muslim? I was like, I guess. They're like, okay. You know, <laughs> so. So when you when you went to France, you got down with some people from Morocco or within, yeah. that, within that culture. And then I, and then. And they, then you went to Morocco. Yeah, then they took me with them. They got were, it. Yeah. Got it, got it. And it was crazy because when I first went, they were like, I mean, Moroccans, Moroccans are like the original cowboys. That's what's up, you know, yeah. Like they just, they're like, we like to travel, we like to go places, whatever. So they were like, yeah, just meet us in this in this uh, restaurant 
you know, yeah. in like four days. And I was like, okay. In four days. Like, yo, man, we're going to be over here. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, okay. I was like, what time? They're like, mm, four days from now, okay? Just show up. You know? <laughs> I mean, and just imagine, like, this is before cell phones, really, you know? Oh, man. You know, there's so much stuff I didn't. <laughs> I kind of wish we'd go back to that. It would be a little, like, you would have to communicate a better way, you know? You know how many, like, actual letters I sent to people? It was like, hey, man, I'm coming to your town. Come see me. In, in like, two weeks. And they're like, oh, yeah. Say what's All up. All right, that's what's up. Right. Here's my telephone number when you land. And, and, and then you And call. you go to a phone booth. <laughs> right. tick a doo Hey, I'm I am here. here. <laughs> Still wouldn't work for freaking Moroccans. They were like, meh. It was like, yeah, we take it way deep. We take it way farther back than that. Yeah, you know, it's like, like I got payphone. smoke signals and freaking, you know, <laughs> if you if you smell jasmine in the air, that means I arrived. You know what I mean? Like they on that level. So I go to this restaurant and I'm just waiting. You know, and like this the dude who's at the restaurant, he's like, So you are here for I was like, I'm supposed to meet some people. He's like, Who can I ask? I was like, uh, Yasser Munji. He's like, Oh, your friends at Yasser Munji. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. You know, he's like, Oh, you know, and you're like, You want tea? And I was like, Yeah, sure, you know, like hanging out, but da. He's he's like, I have to close, but uh Yasser Munji is not here. I'm like, Yeah, I know, I don't know what the fuck to do. He's like, oh, you come to my house. And I was like, what, playboy? He's like, no, 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 it's okay, it's okay. You you sit with my wife and, and my daughter and you wait and da-da-da. And I was like, and I know, you know, the thing I know about, you know, Muslim culture, Moroccan culture, like, you don't just, like, it's it's a thing to be invited to somebody's house. No, sure. Do you know what I mean? Sure. And, like, you know, he invited me into his house and, like. I mean, it's kind of like, you know, like, you being invited somewhere and, like, and you ain't got nothing. Nothing. He showed up empty handed, you know what yeah. I'm saying? It's like my man, he he came out with a tray, like this big, big tray of cigarettes from all around the world. I hear you. He was like, What do, do do you like? Do you like anything you like? And I was like, Oh, you got silk cuts. I've been smoking silk cuts at the time. Yeah. And he was like, Oh, I'm so happy I have the cigarette too. Like, fuck my whole world. I mean, like I didn't know I didn't know what um hospitality was. Until I went to Morocco. I, I had the, the concept was beyond me. And then of course, you know, three hours later, Yasser Munji come. They're like, Oh, what's up? Okay, cool. I was like, Yo, motherfucker. Are you had me waiting all day? They're like, Why are you mad? We said four days. It's four days. You need to not cry. Come on, let's go. It's, the day wasn't over yet. Right. You know, like, yeah, it's three hours. I was like, these freaking uh, You know, but yeah, nah man, like Morocco like changed my whole world. Like it they just accepted me. That's like, cool. Freaked my whole thing out because I've been so like yeah you know, I'd, I'd been in boarding school in New Hampshire I'd been in freak I'd been on the street in New York yeah. I had been like all these spots where like motherfuckers were just looking at me like I'm some fucking idiot you know and like so it was like you finally found a place where you could belong and like be a part of yep rather than just be like being yep yeah that's cool yeah so they that was like my. How long did you stay there? I was off and on. Yeah. So, like, because then, like, I went to college, and I, like, had to leave college, and I had to, like, you know, find, I had to, like, get some money, and so I went back. And so, like, I went off and on for about five or six years. I was probably there for, like, maybe two, two years, two and a half years solid. Where'd you go to college? So I went to, like, Ithaca for a little bit, and then, okay. um, yeah, I had to leave. Yeah, couldn't afford it. Wife was born in Ithaca. Mm-mm. Yeah. She was born in Ithaca. Her dad was there. Uh, Cornell? I don't, I don't know. I'm mm-hmm. not sure. I didn't have him d- dug deep into that. But she was born in Ithaca. And uh, when he was done with his studies, mm-hmm. they took a steamer ship back to Ethiopia. A steamer ship? Yeah, man. They went, wow. They went. They was on the ship, dude. Wow. The little baby on the ship. Well, that, I mean, her story. Man, you need to get her on this mic. Oh man, you know what? That's that's like a that's a whole mini series right there. See, I want to see the Jerusalem mini series. Yeah. I want to film that. You shit. should. Yeah, I mean, you need to put that on tape because man, she's got like, she's got mad stories. Dude. Her and her friend Gannett, both of them. I'm just like, yeah. you know, I mean, you know, just diving into some of that culture, you know. Oh, hey, so like speak back on uh, our our thing in Ethiopia. Remember, we were at at the uh, cafe, and there was this guy that we were talking to. He was talking about how he got out of Ethiopia. He walked he to walked the Sudan. To the Sudan. That fucked me up. I just read a book about 
uh, like like uh, like me and Malak, my son, mm-hmm. we were we were reading a book together, and we you know we made our own little book club. He chose the book. He Which book? Uh, man, I can't think of the name of the book offhand. Mm-hmm. But it was about this brother who went to school in uh in I think it was in uh, it was in Sudan. Mm-hmm. And they like it was a uh, uh, you know turmoil. Yeah. He had to get out. His teacher was like, just go. Just yeah. go, don't look back. And he ended up like him and like a bunch of other boys. Like like first it was just him in like a group. Right. Uh, like with the kids and like some men and whatever. And then like those groups started slimming up. And then oh. he's like, Okay, let's find some more people, let's find some more people. Eventually, like he gets to like Ethiopia. And uh, it was just, he was in a refugee camp. Mm-hmm. And it was just him and, like, a whole bunch of other boys. And then Ethiopia was, like, raise up. And, like, forced all of them into the water. And there's crocodile in the water. The f- and they're like, yo, break out. You know? And, like, so he ends up surviving with all these boys and like they end up like like I think they went like down to like Kenya or something. Like that was their final destination. Mm-hmm. And they got down with like uh, the, the missionaries. Yeah, the missionaries, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, we know about them. <laughs> yeah. But but they got him they got him a place, you know, they got him to the States, you mm-hmm. know, end up like going to Buffalo. But like nonetheless, like he was just uh, you know, just traveling. He went from like a little kid, like like ten or so, mm-hmm. to like 25 and like this was his whole travel until he got to the to the, to the states you know and then he was like well now i'm here i want to get back and and uh you know save everybody else or at least like make some kind of impact. some uh, some kind of impact yeah and he did good yeah yeah i I'm, i feel dumb that i don't know the name of the book but it was very moving it was a small book mm-hmm. and you probably you probably heard of it but Maybe, when when yeah. I when I find it, I'll tell you, and uh, and then when I when I do tell you, and I'll, I'll remember it, I'll it tell out. everybody else. Yeah. <laughs> Just dub this part out and be like, the name of the book was blah blah blah. Blah, blah, blah. blah. Yeah. Speaking of books, like how'd you how'd you get to writing? So when I was at Ithaca, I went in for TV production and direction. Okay. Because I was like, I want to write movies, and I was writing scripts and stuff, and it was. It was cool, but you know now I have the I have the context to realize like it was weird racist bullshit. At the time, I was just like these people don't like me, or they don't like what I, the stories I'm telling, or whatever you know. And I was just, but it, it just wasn't clicking for me in that department, you know. Um, the other thing, well, one of the things that Morocco gave me was this appreciation. Uh, spirituality and religion, mm-hmm. right? I had never seen, I'd never seen a, a faith really lived. Sure. Like aside from my grandma, you know. So when you're in Morocco, I mean, I don't want to cut you off. No good. But all the mosques, yeah, you hear it at like Constant. twelve noon and like man, when I was all the times. <laughs> one time when I was staying, I was living above this little mosque, this little school for for uh, religious school for kids. Okay. So most people don't know that, but like the the Quran kind of rhymes. Wow! And so they teach the kids to recite the Quran. So I'm waking up seven, eight in the morning to a bunch of little like eight year olds, nine year olds being Al Majin, Al Rahim, Al Rahim, Al I should have eaten that thing that thing. And I'm like, these little mother, right? Yeah. But, but I can't say nothing because they, you know, it's beautiful. You sure, sure. It's, it's beautiful, you know. And it's so, you know, anything repetitive, you just pick up. So I'm just like going downstairs. I'm like, I'm all dude. I'm all this way. They're like, he knows the Quran. I'm like, no, I don't know. When I was in Morocco, I also met these uh, guys, uh, these Ganawa guys. Okay. And the Ganawa were are the descendants of these slaves that came up from Mali and the Sudan and stuff in the 14th century and they kept their own culture so so like as far as like slaves like slaves. the slaves that would have been coming to america kind of slaves those came some came to america mm-hmm. and then some came to north africa slavery was different in north africa <laughs> i can okay okay uh you know they weren't trying to pick cotton um 
but what they had what they kept was their culture and their culture was this um I mean it's all called Gnawa. I don't know another way for it, but like um it was this like trance worship musically oriented tradition. So they call them the bluesmen of Morocco. And they're all like dark like me, like dark skin like me. I see, okay, yeah. So people would see me with my dreads and they're like, Oh, you're Gnawa and I was like, No, I'm not Gnawa. They're like, Yeah, you're Gnawa and I'm like, No, I'm not Gnawa. And then I go to this town of Sawira and they have this like huge festival, Gnawa festival. And I'm like, oh shit, I'm my big Gnawa. <laughs> and I was like, they were getting down, you know, like this like I can't even like describe the music. It's like partially like this like loud, like and then but then like these guys that have these like guitar like things. So it's like boom, 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 and it's like cha 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 you know, my grandma, Black Baptist, you know, growing up in Harlem, there's all this, like, condomble and Vodun stuff, and I was like, what's going on? So, like, you know, the white people weren't feeling me in, like, uh, TV production and direction, so I was interested in, like, the broader narratives, and so I went to religious studies, you know, and so I was studying that, and then it was kind of like, how do I tell these stories and not be confined by what these white people want me to do? That wasn't the language I had for it at the time. I was like, I just want to write. You know, I thought I was going to just do screenplays and, and stuff, and that'd be fine. But, like, they won't even let me play a simple... They won't even tell a simple story from my perspective. And so what it ended up being was writing novels. I mean, like, what kind of stuff they were trying to get you to get on? Or what was the curriculum that they were trying to push, you know? Because it sounded like it, it was like a formula that they were trying to... So Tivas were big at the time. Hmm? Tivas. Okay, got it, got it. So they were like, do a commercial. So I said, okay. Jesus wore them, Moses wore them, now you can wear them too. The original Jerusalem cruisers, Tivas, they're not just for profits anymore. Tivas, half the shoe for twice the money. Tivas, put them on, right? Yeah. And like I was doing that kind of stuff, and they were like, well, how would that sell a shoe? I was like, that would totally sell a shoe. Like, fuck, man. You know? You know? <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Man, if Harriet Tubman had a man, you know how many slaves she could have saved? Damn. You know what I mean? <laughs> trying to, like, you know, just trying to, inf- like, not even do something crazy, but just trying to be me. But it was like, I mean, it's it's very clear when people don't want you. you. You know, like. I mean, what's funny is, like, nowadays, like, people, like, you know, I've I've seen commercials in this time, you know, like in the past times where it's like, oh, let's just throw Jesus up in here. And it's cool. Right. You know, like, oh, Jesus is doing some funny stuff or whatever. But it's like, dude, Jesus did wear wearing some sandals, you know what I'm saying? Like it wasn't it wasn't I wasn't like, Jesus is a is an asshole. You know, or like Moses sucks. I was like, no, this is like they're 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 Tebas. They're they Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Like you know, so it was, I mean, it was stuff like that. It was like, you know, I just couldn't catch a break with these people. Do you know what I mean? Like, they just kept coming at me weird. And I didn't have a lot of money. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, I couldn't shoot extra film. Film, not video. Yeah, film. <laughs> you know, so. You have to, like, go and actually cut that. Exactly. And you cut it, and it's like. Oops. Oops. You better make sure you cut it right. Yep. <laughs> you know, so like I was doing a lot of stuff on video and people were laughing at video and I was like, nah, dude, like, let's just like, let me do some Betamax stuff because Betamax actually looks really good. I hear you. But, hear you know, you. the exper- my experiment, and still to this day, my experimental film teacher was like the one who loved me the most. And she was like, don't do TV production and direction. You're a screenwriter. Just be a screenwriter. And she's like, if you're going to be a screenwriter, you need something to write. Don't do a screenwriting program because all they're going to do is teach you how to use a uh, final draft. She's like, uh, <laughs> she's like, go have some experiences. It sounds like you've had some, have some more, study some stuff that like you don't know about and write off of that. Take some screenwriting classes for sure. There's no need to be a screenwriter. And I was like, okay. And then I couldn't afford to stay. So, um, you know, going through, and then, like, you know, I went, and I got a master's in divinity. Um, I was just, like, I there, there were stories that I wanted to tell. So 
when you don't have any money, like when you don't have money, like a novel is like the working man's freaking like cinema. <laughs> sure. Okay. I got you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I'm like, I don't have to worry about budget. I don't have to worry about casting. I don't have to worry about shit. I just have to worry about getting it on the page. And so I was like, bam, bam, bam. I wrote like three novels and like kept getting rejection letters. And I wrote this one novel that I loved, absolutely loved, thought it was great. Sent it out. People were like, this is a great novel, but it's not a fantasy novel. It's a science fiction novel. This is a great novel, but it's not a science fiction novel. It's a fantasy novel. Oh, we don't publish this type of stuff, blah, 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 this, blah, blah, that, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, motherfucker. And finally, somebody was like, Look, can you just write something simpler? And I was like, oh, you want simple, motherfucker? You want simple? <laughs> I'll give you fucking simple. I'm going to write simple. And I, like, basically took the premise of the world of that previous novel and just applied it to a totally new character and made what I thought was a relatively simple outline, or a simple you know, story. Sure. And that's liminal people. And I self published that. So I hate to have seen what the what the real version of I that know. was. Cause like, man, <laughs> for you to have simpled that up, I was like, man, this book is this book is deep, man. Like I'm 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 like, I had a like I'm in England. Yeah. I'm like, man, yeah. the, the bridge is blowing up, all kind of stuff. I'm like, man, I could see this. I had Russian religious philosophers in there. I had like, you know, I had the spirit of incarceration attacking motherfuckers. <laughs> exactly. The, the spirit it, of incarceration. The spirit of incarceration. Oh man, that's, yes, that's hella deep. Living right there. on a fictitious island from the Count of Monte Cristo, the Chateau yeah. d'If. Yeah, yeah. I had oh. I had that dude living there, and I mean, it was. Oh my goodness! I had bullets that made you forget time that would hit you. And you'd, and you'd forget a second or a minute or an hour. Oh my goodness! Do you know what I mean? Oh so you could So you had to not be shot by time. See what I'm saying? I, I was I was like deep in the shit, man. <laughs> I think you still should go with that because I was like, because like you kind of touched on that in the last one, you yeah. know, like with the lady on the ship and the time travel, oh, like the yeah. Did you? Oh, that was Liminal War. Yeah. So did you read Entropy of Bones? I did. So that's the same chick. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. I mean, that's that was you know spirit you know ghost sharks oh, that man. like eat the slaves you know and yeah. they and they still hungry nigga they still hungry. I, I see. I see. <laughs> you know what I mean? I like that was, you know, like it's all in there. But I feel like cats. I don't know. Cats will see it or they won't. I hear you. I mean, yeah. I saw it. Yeah, I know I, you did. <laughs> That was a delicious was book. I it. ate that up, man. I was like, when you got it, you got another one? Because <laughs> he gave me the first one in Ethiopia, man. I sat there. I, I, man, I read that up in about a week. I'm like, I'm like going to my job. I'm, I'm arriving like an hour early just so I can read. <laughs> Good. See, I love, that makes my heart happy, man. You I'm, have sitting no in the, I'm sitting in the parking lot of the, of the, uh, of the uh, Taitu Hotel. It's like, yeah. <laughs> Oh, ain't nobody here yet? I'm going to go back out to the car. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, lo I love having that relationship with books. Like, when you find that book where you're like, oh, no, I need to know. I'm going to lose some sleep over this shit. <laughs> I don't really read um, a lot. But when, like, I really started reading because, like, I was, like, quitting smoking. Mm -hmm. So when we went to Ethiopia, um, I, I didn't want to smoke anymore. You know, I was like, man, I'm, I'm done with, like, smoking tobacco. Mm -hmm. I've been smoking for, like, 20 years. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this ain't doing me no good. And I'm kind of bored of it. And you got kids. And you want yeah, to and I don't want them to see that and all that stuff. Yeah. I don't think they ever saw me. But, like, at the same time, it's like. Who wants to be that fool? I don't want to be that sneaking. guy. And you know, I'm sneaking in the cut. So I was like, you know, when I get here, I'm not gonna smoke. I brought all my little books, and one, and, and what I tried to do was go into all the books that I missed out on in high school, mm. like all those, like when I was supposed to be like reading in, in English class, and mm. I'm over here fucking up. Yeah. So I read Tell of Two Cities, mm -hmm. and you know, I remember reading it in school, but not really like really getting into it. Yeah. You know, it was like there's stuff that would like pique my interest, but it as a whole it didn't. Yeah. And then when I read it again, I was like, oh my goodness, I'm seeing the whole story. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And then it's like, and then like I was like, I couldn't get enough of books. So by the time I met you, I'd read all my books. Mm. 
Actually, I read all my books in the first two months. Right. Of, Cause of once being you start. there, because I was like, man, I, you know, it was like, this was like worse than smoking cigarettes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like, oh man, let me read all these. What? Oh, I'm done. I'm, I'm jonesing. What else you got to read? <laughs> well, I'll read that. I'll, 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 I'll read an Oprah book. Whatever. I don't care. I'll read anything. Hey, don't, hey man. I, I don't. I was like, I did, I've read all like Toni Morrison books. Oh, nice. I, I, man, I'm. I love her. Yes, I like the story. I could see her stories. Can I tell you, like, the books that I think every black person should read? I don't know. It sounds it's gonna sound crazy. You gotta read the Russians. The Russians. You gotta read War and Peace. Oh, word. I mean, I did not like. I mean, last I, year I read it and I was like, oh, okay, this shit is dope. Okay, like it's it's like read War and Peace, read Crime and Punishment. Mm-hmm. I mean, the Brothers Karamazov. Okay, like. You got to get past the names. Everybody's name you. sounds the same. Yeah. But then when you start hitting, like, what's actually going, like, War and, like, uh, yeah, War and Peace, you're just like, oh, this is just about motherfuckers getting real on their life. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Because what did I read? I, I read some Russian stuff. Um, I can't remember what I read. Because um, I, I, I got into a lot of, like, short stories. Mm-hmm. And, um, man, I can't remember the name of the guy, but I can explain the one where the guy turns into a bug. Oh, Kafka. Kafka. Yeah. Yeah, I read Kafka. Yeah. He's Kafka. from Prague, but fuck Okay, yeah. but, no, but, but Eastern Europe. Right. No, I know. Yes. No, Kafka. See, the problem with Kafka is that he don't, he don't leave you with anything. Okay. He know he he's not like this is what this is about. He's just like and the motherfucker turned into a bug and then he died and then he turned over and his sister was weird and everybody wanted money from him done and you're like wait what? What happened? Like there's no <laughs> redemption from this. What the fuck? <laughs> but like why did this start? <laughs> Do you know like how did this? He just woke up and all of a he sudden he woke up and he was a bug. I yeah. was like what the hell, dude. Yeah. And they kept him in the room. <laughs> right. You know like no. Nah, but have you read the trial? No. That's the black man's experience in America. Okay. Okay. That is that is the that is the like if you've ever been arrested, mm-hmm. that's the that's what you enter. Where you're just like, what, what's happening? You on trial? What the fuck am I on trial for? Wait, man, you ain't even ready to be on trial yet. You just sit there until we tell you to processing, be on trial. Processing. Yeah, that's what I love, man. One time in New York. Mm-hmm. One time in New York, they did not catch me doing shit. I didn't do shit. Putting on record. They didn't catch me doing shit. However, this police officer decided to tackle me like I was a motherfucking football, throw me in the back of a car, start talking all this shit. I'm 13. I'm like, your entire mom's asshole looks like a fucking 49ers fucking running back. I don't even know everything about you. Fuck, blah, 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 blah. I'm kicking the the seat, and um, they come back, and they're like, oh, you ever see a nightstick party? I'm like, what's the pop? Just like all over. Mad as fuck, angry as fuck. These motherfuckers put so New York, you get arrested in Manhattan. If you got warrants in Brooklyn back then, they put you on a on a van to go to Brooklyn to process you. Okay. You get arrested in Brooklyn, you got something in Queens, they send you you know, they had me on that thing for fifteen hours just just so I would never be processed, just to fuck with me. Oh, my goodness. I was like, I hate it. It was Kafka's The Trial. I was like, I did not do anything. You know what I did? I talked back. I was like, okay, I see you. Sorry, man. We went off. Anyway, writing. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so um, I self-published, and then um, my friend Nalo Hopkinson, who is an amazing writer and an amazing friend, um, and she... She was like, hey, your book is good. Um, You should uh, send it to these guys, uh, Small Beer Press. I sent it to them. They were like, yeah, they got some typos in there, but, you know, like, fix it up. And, you know, like, we'd like to publish it. And and boom. And then they were like, let us know when you have something else. And I was like, boom, 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 boom. So, I mean, with writing, like, um, like, yeah, they were like, uh, there's some typos. So, I mean, like, do you edit yourself? Do I edit myself? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm quite sure you go through do uh, drafts. drafts. Yeah, but like you know, like the thought process. Do you, you miss something? Like, is there like, yeah. do you look for someone on the outer realm? It's like, okay, look, let let me let me let me look at your book. Yes, got it. 
Got it. Yes, man. And if you want to be one of the people for the next one, you can be. Look, here's the way it works for me. All right. You got you, you got to throw up on the page. All right. Just you let it flow. Everything. Everything. All right. I can edit anything on a page. I can't edit shit in my head. So I throw it all up, right? And then I read it. And then I go, that don't work, 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 that don't work. And then I'm like, God damn it, I'm cutting out so much, there's not going to be anything left. And I'm like, that don't work, that don't work. And then I and I look at it, and I'm like, oh, okay, well, maybe actually I just need to add this. I need to move this around, and da da And then I put that through, and I go around, and I add that, and I'm like, whoa, and then I read it again. And then I'm like, ah, that don't work, that don't work, that don't work, that don't work. And I'm like, okay, and I fix that, and I fix that, and I fix that, and I fix that. I'm like, add a little bit more there, turn that around, put that over there, but boom. And I'm like, okay, cool. I like this. Let me see what my five people who read my shit think about this. Well, I got some really good people. I've chatted them out before. Jesse Powell, Katie Franco, you know, they they read it and they're like, I don't like this part. I mm, like this part. Mm, okay. I'm confused by this part. Yeah. What's this part about? I'm like, okay. I come back and I, you know. What do you need? What is, you know, blah, 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 blah. and then when it's there, then I send it off. That's good. Cause I mean, like, you know, I don't even know that process. I mean, I only write lyrics. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I do go through like the whole, but I don't let nobody see it. Mm-hmm. It's me. And until it sounds right to me and like to the cadence of how I want it to be and, and all that stuff, I go through all these levels of how I'm going to get it out. Right. You know, it's like, oh, yeah, no, that word just don't work. That yeah. word doesn't like have the right cadence to it. It's got too many syllables in it. It's got this. It's got that. Right. But um, well, but but just to like write a book, you know, I would not because I don't, I don't know that realm. And I was like, I, it's just, it's just a, a mystery to me. Be like, man, how, how does one even like get from their head to the paper to the shelf? Well, you, well, you do the head to the paper. Right? Sure. The thing is, your finished product is actually a production. Got it. And that's harder as far as I'm concerned. Because, you know, you got one moment mm-hmm. to capture that. Sure. Whether it's recorded or live, right? My final product has to be repeated for whoever looks at that page. I see. And so I need other people to be like, I need people to look at it and go, yes, I got that experience. From every, from ideally, from every page, from every paragraph, from every sentence. That's the ideal. If it's a formula, that's the great formula. You know what I mean? I mean, that's your formula. And, it's the grind. Or that, that, or, that's all it is. It's just the grind. That's how it works, huh? Yeah, you just, you know, like... Good sentences make good paragraphs. Good paragraphs make good pages. Good pages make good books. Sure. There's it's it's not rocket science. Just a <laughs> lot of baby steps. Yeah. 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 It's I mean it's 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 not it's unforgiving. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's you know there's there's no trickery. There's no wizardry. But it's it's anybody can do it if you just got to do it. Sure. You know. Might want to consider doing something else with your life. Yeah. Might, you know, like, yeah. if, you can, if you can change locks, you might want to be a locksmith. You know what I mean? If you could, if you could throw some lyrics down, you might want to be a musician. That's what's up. But if you want to be a writer, a writer writes. You got to write. You can't be like, oh, today, I'm going to just write this. I'm, I'm going to write, write a book today. I'm going to eat some cookies. I'm going to play my video games. I'm going to look at the sky. I'm going to talk to my girl. I'm going to eat some more cookies. I'm going to look at the light, and maybe I'll think about writing. That's many things. It's not a writer. No, I hear you. I hear you. What would you do today? I woke up this morning, I wrote for an hour, and I hate everything I wrote. That's a writer. Mm. Because even if you hate it, especially when you hate it, you're you're right. You're still writing. Yeah. Done. So, and that's the great thing. It's kind of like stand up, like for me, oh, right? Yeah, stand like, up. I mean, I would love to like. <laughs> I mean, you know, every now and then I will write jokes, mm-hmm. and they funny to me. <laughs> here's a here's the best <laughs> thing about being stand up, man. As soon as you do your first open mic or whatever, yeah, a dude says. Our next stand-up comic is, as soon as you try, yeah, you a stand-up. That's what's up. I hear you. I as, mean, it's, 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 
you gotta you grow. You done. Yeah. I mean, you're not done, but you started. As soon as you write, yeah, you're a writer. Now, you want to be a published writer, you got to do other things. You want to be a professional writer, you got to do other things. You want to be a paid puff, professional writer, you got to do some other things. But you're a writer as soon as you write. You're a stand-up as soon as you start doing stand-up. You know? it, is, it is what it is, it's, you know? That's, you know, and that's, that's where I shine. You know what I mean? All the other stuff, the polish, the spit, the whatever, I'm like, well, that's, that's, I'm not interested in that. It's not exciting to me. But you put me on a stage, yeah. bam, I'll give you something. You give me a naked page, yeah. bam, I'll give you something. Bam. Doing music back in the days and whatnot, I'm just like, man, you know, uh, yeah, I could like, you know, I wanted to get to that level, you know, Big Daddy Kane level, yeah. or whatever. But man, just being on stage and like reaching those people right there. Mm-hmm. And not even really be, you know, not even tripping on like, like they looking at me. Like I got rid of stage fright long time ago. Mm-hmm. Like stage fright, I don't, I don't care about stage fright. Yeah. Like I get on the stage, I see, like I think like the first time that I ever like really like said something that I wrote and I got a good response from it, I was thirteen. Mm-hmm. We were having like a basketball game at our at our middle school, and they were like, "Okay, everybody wrote some stuff, wrote a rap about Martin Luther King." And we gonna perf- and y'all get to perform it <laughs> at halftime. <laughs> oh man, man, you just threw me back. <laughs> I got up there. I had some dope lyrics. It was the same time as uh, Christmas in Hollis was out. Yeah. So I remember this girl in my class. I, I will never forget her. Her name was Patrice, and she was like, uh, she wrote her rap. We all had to write a rap, and mm-hmm. we all had to get in in, in our class, mm-hmm. and they were gonna pick the best people out of all the eighth grade cl- or yeah all the eighth grade classes and uh so she got up there and she's all she said her thing and then then all of a sudden she's all and now i'm chilling and cooling just like a snowman <laughs> and i was like you straight biting dude why, What's wrong? why you buying lyrics why, why you buying buy- lyrics though why you buying lyrics though <laughs> why you buying lyrics that's my question oh man and then like when i got so like i had been like having problems with some cats like mm-hmm. and then finally like I got up there and I, I said what I had to say. People was like, "That's yeah. what's up. That's what's yeah. up. That's my dude right there." And it was like, "It was like, man, I didn't know you could rap." It's like, man, y'all ain't never get the chance to like know me, dude. Mm-hmm. Y'all always trying to beat me down and shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Maybe she back up. Like, like back up, something. man. You know what I'm saying? Then me and my boy Felix, we was always talking about like trying to get in the studio. No, we was all, we was trying to make a song mm-hmm. on, the, on the boom box. Oh, like just off the old yeah, with the, with the with the with the mic on the boom box. Oh, we didn't have man. no microphones. We he had a boom box. It had oh, a you record. Would just get it right next we was all it? up on. It had the the tape side. Yep. and the record side. We yeah. was like, uh, uh, uh. and then we we made this tape and we took it over to his friend across the street, the, the soldier dude. He's like, y'all need to get up in the studio. Like that's how y'all gonna make a song. Like, like. <laughs> a, 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 a studio. Here's some real shit for you. What, what, what's a studio? So then we looked in the yellow pages. Oh. And we tried to find a studio. You went that big? <laughs> we It never came to, came to flourish, okay. you know what I'm saying? But, but we, we took the time to, like, even, like, go for that route, you know? Yeah. It's like, it was like, dude. But, like, yeah, we never, we never rapped after that. And I was like, it's all good. Dude, but ever ever since then, like I was like just like, oh man, when I find my crew, it's about to be on. Right, it's about to be on. <laughs> <laughs> I remember my friend Laura Van Manen's dad. Yeah, he was. He called himself a semi-professional writer. All right, and he read one of my short stories, and he said it was good. And I'm I remember I walked around for like six months. I was like. I am half of a semi-professional writer. Because I'm a quarter writer. I was, <laughs> was so happy. I was like, this, this semi-professional writer told me I was good. So I'm half as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Was, what, how, how are you feeling today? Me, as a half of a semi-professional writer, I'm feeling excellent. <laughs> like an idiot. But... We take whatever 
I mean, whatever, like, fluffs your ego, you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, it's because it's art, any art, any art, to actually do it requires a level of insanity. Oh, yeah, you got to be fucking nuts to be like, this is all I want to do. You know, I used to tell my, like, my great aunt and all them, she's like, oh, yeah, you know, music's my thing. She thought, music's your side thing until you make it your thing. Right. And I was like, no, 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 I got this. <laughs> I'm in my, going fucking nuts, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, oh, I do this right raps. And <laughs> I mean, and but that's where I'm at in my life now where I'm like, I have given so much to so many other things other than my writing. Because, you know, broke nigga, like just just born and raised broke, you know, and like I'm like I will eat. Oh yeah. Like don't don't get it confused. Yeah. Like I'm a, I'm not gonna go broke. I can't go broke. I'm not gonna be that dude. And so I've done that, and I've you know, I made six figures, and I was like woo 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 yeah 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 six figures in the Bay Area don't mean shit. No. You know what I mean? And I'm like not like what I want to do like what I need to do is be working on my craft every day yeah. that's what I need to do it, everything it. else aside from keeping my lady happy some bullshit I hear you you know like it's I'm, I'm it's like just just real talk all day every day like you know, I keep my squad good, like my people who who back me up 110%. I got them. Keep my lady good because, you know, she's squad number one and work on my craft. And everything else, I don't really give a shit about. Like, I, you know, don't publish this till I get, you know, <laughs> till I get out of my slave right now. But, like, honestly, like, what really matters, you know, is, like, perfecting that craft, you know, sure. and so, you know, I'm, I don't need to be a legend for all time. I don't need to be the best writer of all time, but, like, I really do want to make my mark. For a cat for like me who don't read that much and to, like, fall in love with your books, I, I think you could reach some cats, you know what I'm saying? I, I think you could totally, like, make a mark on some folks, you know? Yeah. But um, what, what do you got? What's in the future? Uh, um, I mean, you got yeah. you got these you got these three books. There's there's a there's, there's one a, more one, there's one more coming. One more from the liminals. One one wait a minute. One more from the liminals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man. man, you know I thought it was always like you know you just make a trilogy and you through. No, there's one more, man. There's Word. one more. Ooh. Yeah. I mean, you know, is it gonna be thicker than the other ones? Yeah. Ooh. Man, yeah, I can't yeah. wait. I can't wait. I mean, you know, you saw how Liminal War got left. Yeah. You know, yeah. where they were like, but um, so we fucked up. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, we fucked up. Man, that is so dope. That's dope. I can't and, and, and um so so you got one more coming. Yeah. And was there is there something else you got going on? Like just Yeah. So uh my boy John Jennings and I are working on well I mean, well, so John came to me with the idea of this book called Box of Bones. Okay. And it's kind of like, um, if you can think about Tales from the Crypt. Yeah, yeah. Meets black history. Ooh-wee. Because if you look at black history, it's kind of like a horror show. It is. So imagine if whenever someone spilled black blood throughout history, there were these mystical creatures that came out and just fucked up everybody. Yes. Like some Christmas addicts? I mean, Christmas blood, addicts. Just like, this is like some slave revolts in Cuba. Some this over is that, like, over the side ship middle passage. Exactly. Ooh, it's all we, it. it's I'm, all I'm scared. I don't, I don't even want to go across and, the Atlantic if yeah. that's the case. And these know? beasties are like not happy with, you know, just, and they just ripping shit up. They ripping shit wow. up. Wow. So... Wow. So we've been working on that, and then John brought in all these other artists who are fucking dope. Yeah. So um, he's working on the, the the inking and the coloring of these pages okay. now. Okay, okay. Um, so, yeah, that's going to be the next project probably, and then the last liminal. And then I got this thing, man, where, like, um, 
you know, I kind of want to work a little bit more in like the real world setting and kind of like what we were talking about earlier where, you know, you, the the 80s, the 70s and the 80s. Yeah, yeah. You got all these kids who are children of these uh, lost and failed revolutions, you know, and there's this narrative there. There's this like tension there, you know. There's an untold story there. For sure. You know? I mean, I grew up... I grew up admiring... And I don't know why, because my mom was not down with this, but the Bader-Meinhof group, the um, Red F- Red, Ar- Red Army Fraction. Okay. They were blowing shit up in Europe all the time. Okay, I got you. Okay. Um, and I was like, oh, like, I had a Red Army Faction uh, uh, patch. Got it. And I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. Like, now, there's no way I'd wear that shit. But, like, that sort of zeitgeist, mm-hmm. right, of, like, these are political actions that are going on where people have studied. Sure. Right? These are not dumb people. Sure. And they're like, what we need to do is armed insurrection. And then they lost. So what I want to know is what happened to their children. Because in some ways, that's how I feel. I hear, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So there's this narrative that's at play there for me, you know, about like you. how to how to talk about it's like them. the children of the revolutions, but of the failed revolutions, of the failed revolutions, yeah, you know, of the lost on the loser losing side of the revolution. Exactly. Wow. Yeah. And I think those narratives are important, especially now, because you know I hate the fact that in terms of like superheroes, you know, the two most popular superheroes now, Iron Man. And Batman, they're both millionaires, right? I mean, they could buy. Oh, they could buy their shit. You know what I'm saying? You, you know, you know who they should buy? The villains, because half the time the bill, villains just want money. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, you know, because like I was checking out something. I, I don't know where it was, but like they were like it was like a story about like how the villains became villains and mm-hmm. why they became villains. Mm-hmm. You know, nobody becomes a villain just because like. You know, it's like, oh, I'll wake up. It's like, man, I'm just fucking, I'm badass. I'm just going <laughs> to I'm I'm gonna fucking blow, blow some, some shit, shit up. up. I'm yeah. going to fuck you up and all them. It's like, no, it's always something. You know, right. it's like the the industry did something to them and they got disfigured or. or I was I was, I was was the best in my class and this little white boy came through. His name was Reed Richards. You know. Hey, man, I was like, I was trying to fight for my people. And all of a sudden, this bald headed dude named Charles X. Haver came through, was talking about hold hands. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Exactly, yeah. yeah. So, my thing is like, you know, like I, I like shows like Firefly. Okay. You know? Yeah, yeah. Because, like, it starts off with them losing. They lost. And the question is, how do you keep fighting when you lost? How do you, yeah, how do you keep that, that spirit going? So my favorite, you asked him about my first comic book, I think, earlier. I think it was Daredevil 227. I might be wrong. It might be 229. It's 227, 229. So Daredevil, Frank, uh, Matt Murdock, um, Matt Murdock's girlfriend, Karen Page, yeah. sells out his secret identity for a hit of smack in Mexico. <laughs> In Mexico, even. In Mexico. She's like, yo, I'm going to go down here and give me some of this, like, this Tijuana. Blah, blah, blah. blah, blah. Know, just, ah, give me that, give me that, right? Get back, gets back to the kingpin of crime. Kingpin's like, you know what? I'm not going to, I'm not going to take down Daredevil. Mm-hmm. I'm going to take down Matt Murdock. And he gets Matt Murdock disbarred. Wow. And he, like, he, he, he just fucks with Matt Murdock left and right. Right, like it's like his girl, his current girlfriend to break up with him on some weird recording of some old girlfriend talking shit. Like it's like everybody think that he's crazy. Does all this shit, right? Yeah, yeah. Matt yeah. Murdock is like, and then like the end of the issue, you know, the house his he blows up his house, and and Daredevil's like, it didn't speak gangster until until this. He's like, if it's a gangster, I know who did it. Wilson Frisk. Kingpin of crime, and he goes to get Wilson Frisk, and he's like, "That's it, I'm gonna fuck, I'm gonna whoop his ass, right?" Yeah, Kingpin, that's all fat, but that dude knows what the fuck he's doing, and he beats Matt Murdock's ass. But there's these three panels that I'll never forget, and it's just the Kingpin's fist, right up in the air, going down, coming up, and coming up is just bloody, right? And he's got he's got a uh, uh, Daredevil held down. 
And after all the fight, it, the, the captions are simple. It just goes, never give up. Right? The fist goes up. Never give up when he's punched. Never give. And the fist comes up. And it's just like, that's a hero to me. A hero to me is when you get in your ass beat and you still don't give up. You still don't give up. It's like, man, I ain't quitting, dude. You yeah. can beat me. Yeah, I'm beat down. Yeah. Did you kill me? Because you weak, dude. You should have killed me when you had the chance. Pretty much. <laughs> Pull your gun on me. You better kill me, nigga. That's you know what I mean? Like, that's, I, what's up. that's my thing, right? And those are the stories I want to I wanna promote of just like, you don't quit because you're beat. Yeah. Like, you don't, like... You don't pick a fight only if you know you can win. Yeah, I mean, that's that's some weak stuff right there. You but know that's I mean? where we're living right now in 2017, United States, President, you know, <laughs> you know, President Hump. 45. <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, you, like, you can't, um, we've, been, we've been told all these stories about rich people beating poor people. Mm-hmm. You know, these narratives of, like, domination and oppression, you know, of us. Yeah. You know, yeah, and we and we bought them, and we've bought into them, and we've we've talked about them as though they were the right way to go, and I'm just like, no, like I want to tell the story of the people that like struggled and fought and lost and struggled and fought and lost and struggled and fought and lost and like that's not a losing story. No, the fact that you tell that battle. story. That's a battle, dude. You know what I mean? Like, no war has been won in one day. No. You know? Because, I mean, like, there's the thought of the war. There's the building up to the war. There's the actuality of the war. And then there's the fight. And then once you're in the fight, it's like, man, who wants to, who wants to lose a fight? Not you me. know? Like, if you get into a fight and you're like, I came to lose. Right. You didn't come to fight. Right. You know? So, so yeah, wow, yeah, I, man, I can't wait for that. And that, and you know, if you read the liminal people, you know, if you knew, read the liminal war, you know. Mm-hmm. So I think the dude's like, we fucked up. Yeah. And he's like, yep. He's like, we lost. He's like, yep. He's like, that's it. He's like, nah. He's like, you gonna quit now? Because we got these fools here who are still here who still want to fight. We think we might got some allies over there. You want to. Are you going to, if you're going to quit, okay, but we might win. Yeah. We'll probably lose. Let's be clear. We probably lose, but we might win. But we might win. <laughs> so if you want to buy all, go ahead and do that. But we're going to keep doing what we do. Exactly. We're going to keep doing what we do. And don't be like, I was down with y'all when don't you please, left. Shut please just, just leave. White America. Yeah, just, white America. Just leave. Don't come back. White America. Like, you know, like, we're going to take three hits to get six. You know what I mean? Like, we, like that's that's me. Like, you want to hit me three times? Pa, pa, pa. Okay, cool. Guess what? Six times. Pa, 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 pa. Now how you feel? How you feel? You feel fucked up? You feel fucked? Come on, throw three again. Throw three again. Oh, what? Oh, you missed that one. Pa, 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 pa. You know, like... <laughs> You know, that those first five fucked you up. You know? That's what's up. That's what's up. You know, so that's that. Those are the stories I want to tell, and you know, and then maybe just do some. I would love to just get some industry money in my pocket. Yeah. You know, just handle some student loan shit. <laughs> you know, like just yeah. just clear some One shit. One of these up. days, man. Hey, black poorest people and fam out there, I, I need to pay some student loans. Hey, man. And once I pay mine, I hope y'all pay y'all. You see what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just make it. Can we make it a group thing? You know what I'm saying. I mean, this is the thing that fucks me up. You saw Fight Club, right? Yeah. Everybody sitting there talking about Fight Club, and Fight Club was great, and he was crazy, and he was. Yeah. Hey man, did you see the end of that movie? Didn't Didn't he destroy the three main credit bureaus? Yes. Oh yeah. I was like, what the fuck? Oh How yeah. Come nobody has taken him up on that he idea. Knows. Oh man. Yeah. I mean, yeah. look. Uh, what, what anonymous? Yeah. Low sec. <laughs> the fuck is y'all doing, man? I don't give a fuck about Hillary Clinton's emails. You need to hit Sally Mae. You need to hit all the credit fucking. You and what's funny is like all these all these companies like like uh, they selling them off to another company. Naviance. So, yeah, I got Ooh. that. And uh, who, who else I got? Uh, uh, Sally Mae opted out. Cat. 
Like, oh, just, just. I don't know. Like, so I had Citibank. They opted out to somebody else and, like, they selling you. They selling you. They selling it. They selling you. You, you know, know they what selling saying? your debt. And then the fucked up thing, because people were doing this for a little bit, because you can buy debt in bulk for yeah. pennies on the dollar. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. You can be like, okay, I'm gonna buy that two million dollars worth of debt yeah. for two hundred thousand dollars. You got me? You got me? Good. Boom. The problem is you can't they won't tell you which debt you get. Yeah. So you can't be like, hey, me and you, let's get together. Let's buy two hundred thousand dollars worth of debt, two million dollars worth of debt. Let's make sure both of our debts are in there and we'll clear everybody out. Yeah, I hear you. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Because that's the way to do shit. Yeah. Right? It's like buy buy your own debt. You know. Right. I mean, I'm maybe I'm crazy. No, but I But shouldn't you be able to do that? I mean, if that's a, if that's a uh, thing that's at hand, you know what I mean? Like, if like that's, if you if that's selling pra- it, if that's a business practice that you can do, you can do that. You should be able to do it exactly. for yourself. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? But you know, we ain't getting into that. Well, you know, uh, that that that's a story for my barber, <laughs> my man, my man. Oh man, he got some he got some stories on. On, on on debt and all that stuff. I might have to have that dude up over here. There you go. You know, if y'all want to clear your debt, talk to my barber. Oh, shit. <laughs> Let me talk to your barber, man. Come on, let's go over shit, there. Shit, <laughs> tell me how to get some. Because I'm like, I'm like, hey, man, I'm going to sit back until, like, you know, I hear enough of them stories that you keep telling me, and then I might have to come see you. Dude. I ain't changing my name, though. I'm going to tell you that right now. Okay? No, no, it's all good. Okay. No, it's not, it's yeah. all, it's legal. I'm, not, I'm no. not moving to Guatemala. No, it ain't, it ain't like that. Yeah. Okay. I don't have to like. He's just playing the game that the game is being played. Okay. I don't know? have to sacrifice no chickens or nothing. No. <laughs> you never know. Who cares? You know, I'll go down there. Maybe that's that's the way I'll write my shit off, dude. It's <laughs> like give me a give me a fishing boat and some nets. There you go. You know. I mean I'm all about I'm all about get me some land, have me a, have me some chickens and a, a musical festival. Um you know, I believe once a year. <laughs> I believe your wife's about to set you up, man. Shoot. <laughs> Don't y'all still got property over there? We do, man. We just, just trying to just make it happen, you know. Sure. But once we do, it's hey, everybody's invited, and it's gonna be a musical festival once a year, and you can have some eggs and some beer. Good. That's all I need. Eggs and beer mm-hmm. and a musical festival. I gotta get my lady some greens so she can eat. But oh, know. they got hella go, man. There we go. You know, you know, man. I know. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I mean, I need to get out of here. I need to get All some right, food. All right, dude. In me. Well, I'm glad you came by. I appreciate we it. We good? Oh yeah, we good. Well, yeah. shoot, man. I'm glad you stopped by the Black Porch, and you know, we got it all out mm-hmm. for the most part. But we still got more to get out. So you know, you come by anytime. Oh, I need an invite. And you know, if you got some more books you want to talk about, I can't wait. I can't wait till the new stuff comes out. So when that drops, oh yeah, Black Porch. I'm doing it. Black Porch. Doing it. All right, man. Black Porch, one love. Word. First guest, one love. Black Porch. Yeah, baby. (laughs) (laughs) Hope you had a great time listening to the show. Like I said, we got more to come. More guests, more topics. More, more, more. There's going to be music. There's going to be all kind of stuff. So please, just stay in tune. And come on back to the Black Porch. We appreciate you. We love you. That's what's up. Peace out to the Black Porch fam. I'm out. You can check out the show on theblackporch.com or acres1881.com.